and such an amazing crowd to walk out to. Psyched for absolutely anyone and everyone. And yeah, what you want to see before you pull onto the wall for sure. Yeah, they're standing there in the shade in front of the crowd who have all gathered down the front. They've been sprayed with water by the mascot <laughs> just to keep them cool. Yenya there, uh, she's down as Yevgenia, but she prefers Yenya, so I think we'll maybe stick with that one. Yeah, Yenya to us all. Great to see Ukraine represented. Her teammate Daniel Baldirev winning the uh, speed the other day, which was super emotional for everyone. For sure. Mia Krampel is announced. Along with Jesse Pilts and Yanya Gambra, Olympians, so they're used to this kind of a, a pressure. I chatted to Camille Maroney's coach the other day. He was in the climbing wall, and he was telling me how he's impressed with her because she's such a good role model for the sport. Yeah. Because she's really lovely, she's really nice, she's super strong, and, yeah. and a good one to look up to. Oh, 100%. I mean, it's so easy to take inspiration from all of these ladies, but Camilla is definitely someone that I look at and think, wow, what an athlete. <laughs> At least get Adam Oscar, her teammate Adam Ondra, who won the lead the other day. She's such a talented athlete in her own right. There is Jessie. I mean, Molly, I feel like I've been watching Jessie for years. I climbing. mean, we she's one year older than me, so I've known her since I was about 12, 13 years old. And yeah, it's always been cool to follow her journey. Adam Moyle taped up on the left arm. She was one of the athletes struggling getting treatment backstage the other day because of cramp or something like that. It was a brutal couple of days. Oh, 100%, especially when you're climbing all of the rounds. Yeah, exactly. Going on, what Yenya comes out onto the stage to a huge roar from the crowd as she approaches boulder number one. On the left-hand side of the wall, starts on the bottom right of the slab, finishes up left. And I keep saying slab, it's, it's not really a slab, is it? It's fairly vertical. The bottom's slab, you know. Yeah, sure. <laughs> right, here we go. The boulder round of this combined style format. Four tags on that volume, meaning as long as Genia has four points anywhere on there, she's in for a correct start. So it's complex, the moves on this. The zone is that blue volume there, and you can see the zone tag is lined up to it. So uh, Genia gets that three points indicated on the bottom left. And we're still in our first attempt. Into our second zone. That is the second zone, and awarded as well. And then toe in the crack, a rock over. A match, and we've got our first climb and the first flash. And she is pumped. Yeah, she is. Now, I was going to chat about whether the route setters might have made the boulders easier because they know there's a lead route immediately afterwards. For sure. Could be the case here. I think so. And also being aware of conditions, temperature-wise, and the amount of days on these women have had. This definitely looks easier than what we've seen in previous rounds. Yeah, it does. And before everyone's up in arms about the route setting here, just remember how hard that job is, just to, just to yes. defend the route setting. For sure. Thank you to all of our route setters. It is a thankless task. Yeah, they don't always get it right. Things There are mistakes and things that go wrong, but everyone is trying the hardest. As we watch Yenya here come through, match the top. Just like it is for us, a test event. It's a test event for the route setters too, and I'm sure they'll be making notes and learning as much as they can from this to make sure they really get it right next time. Yes, a very good point. So we're all working this out as we go, but this is the Olympic format. This is the kind of thing that we'll see in the Olympics. How different is it once we remove speed from things? I think it's pretty different. I think a lot of these athletes will be pretty relieved that they don't have to speed climb, not because they don't like it, but simply because of the strain it puts on their bodies mentally. It's almost a completely different sport to bouldering and lead climbing. And the amount of time, especially it being a new sport to a lot of these athletes, because before Tokyo, most of these athletes would have never climbed a speed route in their lives. It was just so hard to train for boulder and lead like you normally would, and also to be climbing. Yeah, absolutely, it was tricky. We're moving past that now, and this is the new style. So, Mia Cramble is underway. And the pressure starts to ramp up here a little bit because she probably knows that Genya flashed the boulder. For sure, Genya was not out on the map for very long, so Mia knows that it's definitely doable and it's doable quick. Yeah, so mind games for her. She needs to keep it together, slow and steady as she reaches out to the left. Into the zone, she's awarded that. 
And you have to uh, you have to sort of change body position on the zone. You can't just touch it with a fingertip. It's not enough anymore. No, you have to use it now. And that's always something the judges need to sort of define a little bit, which is tricky for them. Reach is over. So that's two out of two. Certainly an easier boulder for the women. And the Slovenian coach walks away. Job done. Job done, yeah. <laughs> It definitely looks like they've gone slightly more towards root climbing style with this boulder, I would say. Yeah. A little bit insecure, but the intensity doesn't actually look that high. But I guess maybe that's just the angle of it, like kind of leading itself to this style. Yeah, it could be. And certainly there's a wall with that huge amount of overhangs on it. There's a bit in the middle, but even that's not that overhanging. No. Well, Mia Cramble does what she needed to do had to get a flash really to stay in contention two athletes are done and usually the athletes out first uh, are the ones who qualified last it's a similar situation here but their position is for two events yeah that's so a good point we're not necessarily seeing the bad boulder as first if put in a simple way yeah not that they're bad but you know what i mean no yeah for sure <laughs> so it really is a mixed bag and it's hard to tell how hard a boulder is i guess in in this running order yeah so, Camila Moroni from Italy gets her comp underway. This is the first hold she has to use. Into a heel hook, using literally the rubber on the heels of the shoe to pull them into the wall. And then standing up with the toes. Hasn't got the zone yet. Will now, she touches it and uses it. Strapped up with tape. So that looks like it's more for an injury. Yeah, tendons, ligaments, and stuff in the fingers. And just strapping them helps, sort of, uh, in the same way, strapping a knee is a bit dodgy or a leg, it just helps take a bit of the pressure off. And it's a confidence thing as well. Goes out left, pinches, now needs to match with both hands in control. Which she gets. The start of this just went. Always Right, so three out of three, and I think we can start to say this boulder is a little bit undercooked to start with, which is, uh, well, it's just one of those things, in the same way as in the men's comp, no one topped out one of the boulders. It is such a fine line between too easy and too hard, I'd say. Yeah, but for the next athletes coming out, they will have to top this and flash it to stay in immediate contention. Miller came through with the pinch, looked in complete control. It's a big hole to finish things off there. Nice slow-mo of the dismount. <laughs> slow-motion dismounts are incredible, I always <laughs> think. It's like, I can't imagine what I look like when I'm jumping down from the top of the boulder. Not pretty, put it like that. No, that was pretty graceful, wasn't it? <laughs> it was. I do think we should give star points. So Camilla's down. She's safely through this first boulder, did again what she needed to do. And Chloe Collier is out next. The camera panning down from the roof towards Chloe. And Molly has, uh, she put up on her Instagram earlier that people can send her questions. Do keep doing that because uh, it's good to know what you guys at home want to know. And Molly is the expert, so take advantage <laughs> of her right now. And Chloe runs out and that neck Heavily taped up, she fell from the top of the wall and really whipped her neck. That was a horrible slow motion. So hopefully she's not still struggling with that injury too much. Chloe was someone who competed in the last European Championships that was also in a similar format to this, i.e. doing boulder and lead in one day. She's experienced in it. And I see she continue, continue this brilliant run of form that she's having in this competition. Didn't have the best boulder season for the IFSC World Cup by her standards. Was a bit disappointed and wow, she recovered this week. Definitely peaked at the right time. So no zone awarded yet. Now she touches it and uses it. She stands upwards. Yep, there's the three points given by the judge. You can see how small that left foot is. Her leg shaking a little bit, so much tension. There it is. Oh, and she does take a fall. Have her first fall. 
I forgot what falling was like. Well, there we go. <laughs> the athletes can do it. So, Chloe blinks first out of the women. The first mistake we've seen here. And that left foot, you were right, Molly. Good call there. It was bad. And when she stood up from it, she couldn't quite put the pressure on the right foot and just slip with the kick. And do remember, if you're watching this, when we say that the athletes kind of maybe finding the boulder a bit easy, these are still ridiculously difficult boulders. If an average climber was to find this in the gym, it would be sort of an all-day session, and especially within that four-minute time. Yeah, for sure. The time pressure, and, and the just environment as well, adds so much. And she's already back on. Yeah, so Chloe is up. And that's six point. It should have a uh, minus decimal on it. It hasn't, but uh, that's more the sort of graphic system we'll be using, but it will count against her, that fall. Just to let you know. Gosh, a, a fall feels even more hurtful than a decimal point taken away from exactly. it. <laughs> but no problems this time. Chloe moving into the last move. Yeah, she's gradually she's over. Opting for a heel in that crash. Switches to a toe. And an easy match. So she's done. Oh, and there is the 24.9. Sibiaku! So it doesn't come up immediately, it comes up later. So, yeah, just we're working out how some of these graphics are working too on the screen. So you don't get it immediately, but it comes when she's topped the boulder out. So we crosses through that. Now, someone's asked me about being afraid of falling, and I'm sure Chloe might have had a little bit of a, a scare with a slip like that, especially when they're so unexpected, and it can be quite hard to get back on and give it 100% effort. But I, I think I'm more scared in the gym, being honest, and there's this sort of, you know, give it everything, like, no matter what it takes kind of... Um, attitude at a competition where I'll climb past a cliff and, and won't be scared at all or I'll just throw myself at a dino as much as possible. So I think, yes, these athletes are human. They probably get scared when they go climbing outside. They probably get scared in the gym. But I think there's, yeah, there's a different atmosphere at a competition and, and these women are willing to give it absolutely everything. That's a really good question for whoever sent that because I often, wa often watch them falling. From four and a half meters up, tie up there. You look scary. I mean, yeah, Chloe took quite the fall in Boulder Finals the other day and I'm sure that would have knocked her a little bit, but she got back up and carried on. Yeah, strong competitor. Now we're seeing two athletes out at the same time. This is unusual compared to a normal single file uh, finals format. And again, one of those things they're working out. But yet, Denia is on the right and Eliska Adamovska on the left. So she really needs a flash. And this is the first time we're seeing Golden number two. And it's a big pop up move to the second zone here. It's a long way. It's a bit overhanging. It's awkward, but she finds the palm straight away. Great round so far. Just looking good. At least get on the left is coming towards the end of that boulder. We've got the two zones. Pretty hidden how to hold this cluster of <laughs> yeah, It's blind around a corner, isn't it? So difficult. You can see her trying to work the body over. Try to grab anything she can, find something that's possible. Eliska tops out. That's a flash for her. Perfect start to her comp. She's only still battling away with these pinches. You can see the thumb working really hard. A little bit of a shake. Maybe she is a little bit pumped. Yeah, it's a long time to be on a bowler route. And she's still fighting so much stress and tension through the arms here. The foot does not look very good. No, and that frog squat position looks restful. It's not, trust me. <laughs> That's the final hard. It's not the black volume, it's the yellow score on top of the black volume. Just need to touch point. that. We've seen people. Oh, nice. Still fighting, matches it, controls it. That means a lot. 
Yeah, that was, it would have been heartbreaking to fall off that top move and have to do all that again. For sure. Or to Excellent think that the Black start. Queen was the we'll finish holder, the match that and drop down. We've seen that in previous rounds as well. Yeah, Lisa Lucan matching the wrong bit of the final hole. I know. I guess you're in, so, you're in the zone. And sometimes that can, you know, you can be so distracted by being so focused in a way that you forget to really check things out like that. So there is something underneath. So yeah, made it through. Now, it's so hard to grade problems like this. I get asked all the time, how hard do you have to climb to climb in a World Cup? How hard is a World Cup route? How hard is a World Cup boulder? And honestly, I went for a boulder session this morning and there were probably boulders in the gym that were like, harder than what you get on a World Cup wall. But like we said earlier, it's just the environment, the time pressure, you know, the mental pressure as well makes climbing so much harder. <laughs> yeah, and it's something... Uh, you must get asked It's all something I get asked And also what I always suggest is go to a bowling wall, find something kind of near your limit, and mm. then put a timer on it yeah. and see what happens. Yeah, it's so idea. much more difficult. For sure. And often... I guess climbs aren't necessarily set to make sense almost. They're set to throw people off. Um, so they're tricky because they're, they're trying to make you fall rather than setting it just pure difficulty. So Jesse is back on action on boulder number one. And then that's Mia on the right. So Jessie is up and going. She starts slow and steady, and that mental side we talked about will start to play a factor here. She knows she can't fall, but she wants to keep up with the top four. The near crample is underway on this long she boulder. She figured out how to start that boulder. She's in, into the first zone. She'll get that three points in a set. She's definitely used it by now. Hasn't been thrown up. There it is. That's the zone awarded. She's such an awkward press, that, isn't it? Sure, Jessie's very awkward match. And stepping through. This is a bit different, but it works. And goes back with the right foot, but has a drop knee in order to chalk up. Mia Cramble's on, probably the crux move of this, this big stand-up. It's awkward, it's insecure. Oh, and goes straight into the press rather than holding the hole right underneath it like Jenny did. Jess is one move away from the top. <laughs> Matches, perfect from her. Checks with the judge. Yeah, that's what she was doing, wasn't she? Looking down at the judge. What, what does the judge do? What's she looking for? Usually the judge will raise a clipboard or an iPad um, just for a really obvious uh, symbol that you can limit allow the top. Sometimes it's much harder to tell. To, you, you physically cannot turn around. So most, when that's the case, people just wait an extra second or two. Mia Grample snatches, flicks the right foot to steady herself, matches, and that is a flash and a top for her. Her second top that is rolled around now, and second flash. So, 15 points scored, and the uh, top two women are separated at the moment on their position, their ranking coming into this, because none of them have fallen. If they were to fall, we would start to look at the falls. And this is Mia Crample, look at that laser focused on that sloper. Yeah. So she stands up very slowly and that pop really was a fingertip on the right. So a flash from her. And that was good climbing, solid from her. A flick with that right leg. The match, and down she comes. That's uh, two out of two for Mia Crample. 
interesting with this. It's, it's funny to see a split screen in a final. It's not what I'm used to. We're so used to focusing on one athlete at a time. You can see that. Jesse's super awkward undercut technique to get into this little screw on on the body. Yeah, total focus from her. She looks out towards the final hold at the end there. That's the Austrian coach giving some encouragement. That's the match, kind of crossed under. Doesn't matter how you get there, though. She did it the first time, and that's what matters for this. Looks like it's going to be a case so far anyway that the boulder, you just need to keep in contention. Yeah. You just need to get to the top of every boulder and quickly. Maybe we'll see the athletes spending a little bit longer on the floor before they get on, really refreshing their memory, making sure they know exactly how to climb every single one. Because attempts really count in this round. Yeah, they are. So Hannah Moyle enters for boulder number one. And Camilla Maroney is back for boulder number two. And a huge roar from the crowd. Home favourite. And the other difference by having two athletes climbing at the same time is obviously there's a potential for one of them to see a method on the second boulder, which is, again, True. different from another final. Something that people have pointed out, some people are not happy about. Mm. Uh, and again, just remember, this is sort of a testing event. Some of this might get worked out for the Olympics because it is something to consider, certainly. Definitely. Hannah Moyle, then, she is underway, stands up. Her first attempt starts now. Yeah. Yeah. Easy from her, but this is the, the only real move that looks unsteady on this boulder on the right. Full body length away, you've got to stand up. Just trying to work out which part of the hole to go to, and goes way to the left, but looks easy actually. <laughs> And Hannah, look, you said she was good at slab climbing, she's cruising this yeah, at the moment. Chalking up on every hole. Just making sure. This is probably actually one of the cracks we've got foot in the crack. She waits it, talks her foot in, and makes And a big out. smile. <laughs> Great start for Hannah. And yeah. I think, you know, the boulders almost get harder for every person that comes out because they know that, oh, that's another person who's topped that boulder and probably a flash. So the difficulty of the boulder may not change. Well, Camilla is struggling on these pinches. Oh, she is. Remember, other people have touched this as well. She's going back down to reassess. It's too far for her to rock all the way over. She's definitely going to have to trans transfer her weight over and end up in facing the other way almost. Oh, she does fall. And now we start to see this boulder bite because that took almost two minutes for her to climb it. That would have been quite an exhausting little struggle there as well, especially on those pinches. Well, she took two minutes to climb it. She, she will have to be quicker on the second time, but she will because she'll know the moves, but yeah. she can't rest that long. No. Because every second she rests, there'll be less time on the clock. And I don't think she's really figured out how to climb that top section either, so she'll have more information about the start, but she'll still need to figure out this section, and she'll need some time to do that. Yeah, and she's still waiting here as we watch the replays. She's having a long look and trying to figure this out, but it's only a minute and a half on the clock. Camilla, get climbing. Please get climbing. Let's go. <laughs> so the crowd get behind her. Minute 20. She's obviously, she's really backing that she can climb the bottom fast. I think she is... She's going for a this is the last go. And with boulders being longer, it seems like you've only got two good goes at climbing, which is, I mean, imagine having to climb every boulder that's at your limit in the gym, second go, max. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So Camilla stands up, gets the left foot out into the first zone. This is his move again, he's got 44 seconds. Are we about to see? I feel like I'm hyping a failure here up, but it, it's unusual so far. She's going for that buzzer beater. Yeah, she really is. Right, she's going to have to work something out. She is close, though. Has she figured it out whilst waiting, whilst watching? 
sometimes the pressure of the time counting down can actually help people do incredible, crazy bits of climbing. So hopefully that's the case with Camilla, but she really does not have one there. No, she doesn't, but she's going to have to commit to a sequence here. And she's flipping, she's trying to transition. Uh, six seconds to go. That will be our first non-top of the afternoon. Maybe this ball is more tricky than we thought. Yeah, maybe. So, Camilla Moroni doesn't top. Her score now, 31. So, interesting, that boulder may be more difficult than we would have thought at the top. Down she comes, it was a big fall, disappointing from her. But yeah, hard at the end, I think. Definitely. And our final athlete out on our first boulder. Another huge roar. So there is Yanya Gambra. Going for the clean sweep. Yeah, that's true. It is a clean sweep. Won the bowl, won the lead. Yeah, it was her first European Championship gold this, this week. So there's not many medals she needs to, to finish off the collection. Yeah, true. This will be a new medal for her, though, if she, was, if she is lucky enough to win. So she's up, Yanya, into the first zone easily. Chloe Collier is standing as well. And I think this will be probably the most challenging round that Yanya could have because she's made it clear how much she loves to be challenged physically. So this will be a super mentally challenging round for her, knowing that all the boulders have been top so far and flashed. Chloe stands up easily, big, powerful move from her. She's good at that. Yanya cruises through the slab. Little adjustment, flash from her. Looks like she's just getting warmed up. <laughs> right, so this is the move that Camilla Moroni had issues with. Let's see if Chloe can figure out an efficient sequence. So, yeah, she's working her way to the right. Trying so hard, but she's managed to transition around that froggy pinch foothold. And in for a steady tip. Easy from her, checks it with the <laughs> <laughs> oh, Chloe loves a bit of the showboat. <laughs> she does, didn't she? That was really cool to see. Well, she's done. Good work. She stays in intention at the top. And we can see she's got 49.9, and that's because she had one form on the first boulder. That's the difference between her and Genya and Mia, who are both on 50 points. Good memory. <laughs> I was like, who have we had? There's so much going on. I know, it's a lot, isn't it? Happens quickly. Chloe, look at that, squinting. Out she goes to that top hold. Dances the feet up, matches. And that was the end of bowl two for her. And ask the crowd to liven up a bit more. Yeah, come on, crowd. Get going. It's actually a pack that's been growing all week. It was rammed for the speed here in the stadium, but it's busy today as well. It's like climbing sort of got its own hype as the weeks progressed. Yeah. Like more people are buying tickets. It's even more impressive with this heat. This venue is pretty exposed to the sun, but it has not stopped the crowd from turning up. Yeah. Yeah, we're a bit sheltered here in the commentary box, which is nice, until about four o'clock, and then the sun blinds us for about two hours. Oh, gosh. Just to make you feel sorry for us at home. <laughs> <laughs> not what you can, because we have the best view in the house, I tell you, it's awesome. Well, that was Yanya's top. We're just watching it on full screen. Match at the top, spins down. Good work from Yanya. We were worried at the beginning of the week, uh, sorry, not the beginning of the week, uh, after the lead, because she seemed to have a bit of a leg injury, but it doesn't seem to affect her at the moment. Yanya back on, she runs to the stage. Yeah, true, gets a goal number three. 
Right. Yeah, Anya's only just finished the first. Anya's already on Boulder 3. Wow, we're rolling through. So Boulder 1 is now done. Done and dusted, we move on. And that's Eliska on the left. And those brushes, by the way, we've been saying all week, it was a competition at the Boulder Welt Gym. Uh, and whoever, you had to paint a brush, and whoever paints the brushes that get used, you get free membership for a year or something, really? or a month. I can't remember exactly what They're that's. They're absolutely beautiful. I would love to have one of these brushes. I know, and one of them might fit in hand. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> it <goes> missing. <laughs> yeah, I want one. So, Jenya, heel hooks, what looks like a dual text yeah. hold. And a very interesting start. I think we've had almost Of, of four points from one kind of volume start. Jenya comes in underneath that big yellow volume again. So that the texture that's shining in the sun that's got no grip on it, it's really slippery where her left heel is now. You can see it's sliding around. More powerful this bowl that holds the sloper. And she's uh, having a good time by the looks of things. And this boulder definitely looks a bit harder than our previous two. She is awarded the zone, so the judges deem that she used that zone. I was about to say, I'm not sure she did, but yeah, I guess she's changing direction a bit. It's marginal, that one. Yeah, <laughs> slow-mo doesn't look good. <laughs> No, these scores can be uh, looked at, they can be uh, appealed later on, so sometimes we see changes. And that's why we have all the coaches sat right in front of the wall with all their iPads, um, ready to appeal any decisions that they disagree with, and you know, make sure that we score them correct, basically. Like parking reasons, so just... Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Don't tell them I said that. No, they will not enjoy that. No, they won't. <laughs> Apologies, coaches, I know you're more than that. No, that's a very important job, and it's a big part of the sport. You have to look for it and, and stick up for your own athletes as well. For sure, and when you're out there climbing, you might not you know, be in the right... You might be so focused on the climb that you don't notice some things, and you also can't see what everyone else is doing, so maybe someone else has been awarded a score that they don't deserve. Um, and that's why the coaches are there, to take it all in and, and fight for you on your behalf. Absolutely vital. So Eliska stands up and she starts going right. I think she'll enjoy this rooty style. Mm. And Jenya struggled the second time of asking up to the pocket. Really tricky first move. I do wonder if it'd be easier to just campus it. Yeah, maybe. Campusing is when you take your feet off, just use your arms to power upwards. And yeah, sometimes feet just get in the way a bit for certain yeah. moves. Minute mark. She needs to turn that right knee in so that it's facing the left. Jenya steps up to the second slope past the zone. She's closer now, but needs to find the left one as well and pops off. That's really physical, that move. It's so physical, and the feet on the left are just facing the wrong way. At least get this down. She's quite an emotional climber, I'd say. You can definitely see exactly how she's feeling on her face. Yeah, some people use that sort of inspiration. Others, mm -hmm. like, you can see them almost getting held back by yeah. that emotion. Jenya left the stage before the end. You don't have to run the clock out. If you feel like you haven't got a boulder, you can save some skin and some attempts and energy. And this is a very optimistic attempt from Eliska. Oh, she hasn't done it either, has she? So that's a no-go on that boulder. So now we're starting to see some separation. Right. Yeah, so it's the second time that hasn't been topped, Boulder 2. And Jenya is the first athlete out in Boulder 3. She doesn't send it, so it's certainly harder, I think, on Boulder 3. Or more different style, anyway. Mm. This was her attempt. She was trying to find something on that hold. It really chalked up. She had that left hand on for a long time as well. Kept dropping back into it. So that's, no, that's, that's not that left hand. That's the one underneath the first one. Yeah, she was close, but couldn't couldn't get the body position. Yeah, it wasn't quite high enough on that left hand, I'd say. It's Jenya, so this is the slap to the left. She bumped, lost her foot before yeah, she didn't have the opportunity. Yeah, you can see her left foot slip, and a tiny bit of it was on that shiny bit, and you really don't want to stand on the shiny. <laughs> 
So she waves to the crowd and says goodbye for that boulder. She's got two more to go. No, she's got one more to go. That was boulder three, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, already onto the last boulder. It's been quick. So Jesse Pilts is out again, and Mia Crample takes on boulder number three now. So the women have to face the crowd, then when the buzzer goes, then they're allowed to turn. Jessie just reminding herself of which boulder this is. She's climbed so many in the last five days. That's a really good point, yeah. You're dreaming about boulders. <laughs> yeah. Right, so Mia Cramble starts this heel hook on that slippy surface, and you can see it immediately slid off. I think the campus is right now. And then out right underneath pops her foot again. And I think Mia's opted for two different shoes. Yeah, she has. Lace up on one and a velcro on the other. This is when observation of boulders is really useful. When you climb in a qualification for a boulder and you come, you've not seen the boulder until you have your five minutes on it. You, you kind of end up bringing out bags full of shoes and tape and whatnot. But when you've seen the borders, you can make all of these choices when you're waiting behind the wall. So Mia's clearly decided or seen something that she needs her lace-up boot for on her left foot and her Velcro on her right. Yeah, that decision made before she came out. Sometimes they swap it on the mat, sometimes they don't. And Jessie is into the final part, which we know is problematic. And look at the strength from Mia Cramp as she holds that left slope up. Working her way up to this part, explodes out from the wall. Yeah, and it's hard to explode. It's easy to explode if you're holding a, a crimp like a sharp edge. Yeah. On a slope, it's difficult to generate that power. Sure. Jesse. Turning that left hand. <laughs> She's nearly fallen off so many times. She's still on. Now should finish it. Must match. Does. Awesome from Jesse. That's two out of two, I think, from Jessie. Yes. And then you can see 49.9. No, no, she had a fall then. Near Crample, that slap up with the right. That's a really powerful move. She has got another, she's got a minute 44 on the clock, so she's got time. And this is Jessie, finish things off easily once you got the body position right, brought the right hand from the undercling into the crimp. High left foot, and then match the finish. Focused and stony face, but she likes a little celebration. <laughs> so the fig four again, wrapping that left leg over, just get to a little bit more height. Better now, she knows the moves, looking more confident. So you can see how long these boulders are. In fact, she's got a chalk bag with her. Often the athletes just don't carry that for boulders because it gets in the way a bit. She's taking one up this thing. And the fact that she's able to chalk up on the holds. Usually yeah, boulders are so hard and the holds are so bad that there's not really much opportunity. Here the ball is definitely broken up into sections. And sliding. I don't think she's going to have time. She calls it, so no top for her. So just the two zones awarded, 56 her score. But at the top, head of Genia due to the uh, positioning of the final. And you can see how slippy that shiny bit on that yellow volcano is. The jump over, face the audience, eyes focused. She was pretty relaxed there. She really does, yeah. But no effort at all, but it is physical. And then the slap left into the sloper. Okay, off. Now I'd say Camilla is quite a powerful climber, so I'm really interested to see how she gets on with this third ball. It's 
not a lot on that sloper, is there? No, and slopers depend on a lot of friction between, well, the hold and, and people's skin. And I'm sure these women won't have much skin, so they'll be so much hold, harder to hold. <laughs> I think that's Hannah Moyle there, uh, holding the uh, bag on one finger. <laughs> just too strong, that's how she does it, just shopping on one finger. Oh, yeah. Well, I'll try that, I get a really sore finger. Right, as the audience gets sprayed with water to combat the heat, Hannah Moyle is out, as is Camilla Moroni. So Camilla Moroni has a look. I think she's going to camp us. No, she's not on. OK, so she's got the start, and she is going to camp us. She's going to go for the camp. Oh, no. Oh, no, and she's also... Oh, no. It's got to be a campus. She sets up, thugs her way up to it. That does look a bit easier. It does. But because the bit that you actually hold is so small, the accuracy, you've got to be so accurate on a move like this. And it's hard to be accurate when you just put it with your arms. But she nails it for second time. So good at that kind of move. So she's underway. Hannah Moyle needs to stand up into this familiar position we've seen. Trusting that left foot on the slope. Hannah using oh. not the undercling there, the press. She went to the uh, the crimp, I think the it crimp. is underneath. Yeah, we've not seen that since Genia, but Genia went for a bit of a combination of the press and that press. So slightly different from Hannah Moyle, she goes right. Ooh. I said it wasn't a wrestle position. I think Hannah demonstrated that there. <laughs> it's tricky. Camila Moroni came down as well. Hannah's one move away. The crowd get behind it. Doesn't need that undercling. Right foot, left foot up. Right hand, left foot up, and the match. And another top for Hannah Moyle, keeping things perfect. Probably having the most attempts we've seen out of anyone so far. Oh. Going for quite a wild method on this. Yeah, she was it's really hard to coordinate. Mm. Quite way. a long way away from it as yeah. well. I think she realised it as she spun, she could sort of half see it out of her peripherals. She's gone for almost a swingy method, but then it's quite fast, so she'll need to do a bit of pulling. And that, when she pulls with her arm, she then kind of almost makes but like, doesn't quite get the distance yeah how she held that for as long as she did is pretty special yeah. <laughs> and you can see that right hand that they're on now is actually blocked as well i don't even know what muscle she used to hold herself onto the was it <laughs> shoulders is it what it was crazy and this is hannah's successful attempt So she matched those holes again, more and more chalked up into the crimp easily from her. A slightly different method from Jesse Piltz. And that smile we're so used to when we see Hannah topping out of Boulder again. She gets it done and comes down. And Camilla has 47 seconds to get this done. This will be her last go. And watch this wild move. Will she have the distance this time? Let's see if she tries the same thing. She changes her method. She does swing. And just can't quite work it out. But it looks like she's going for another try. Yeah, she's not going to have a lot of time here. She has only got the first zone, so perhaps going for that six points on the second, which she might have time for. And super impressive that she's just resting out that first move. In. Better this time. Now we'll want this zone. I think it might be all she can get. Yeah. Still a worthwhile attempt if she does get this zone. Holds it. Will the judges award it? Let's see. I think they will on that. I think they will. Let's and wait and see. She pretty much dropped off. That was purely to get the zone. And then, she's yeah. In. Well, yeah. there we go. Look, you talked about tactics. That is a tactic. That we're was, seeing. Yes, definitely. And it paid off. Had it not, I don't know. Had she not got that second zone, it might have been 
just tiring out, tiring her out for no reason. But it was definitely worth it to get that second zone because you know, she now six points on that boulder. Yeah, so six points on that one. It's it's really interesting because usually I think she would have walked away and said, "Look, it's not going to happen. We haven't got enough time." Yeah. So we see maybe the first change in how the athletes approach it with this new system. There she is into that zone. That was enough and she knew the second she pulled yeah. up on it, she was done. That was it. So we've got just Yanya Garnbrett on boulder two left. Chloe's out on boulder three. Both of them looking uh, quite a stony face there yeah, as they came out, maybe focused. feeling the pressure. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's her kind of thing, isn't it? Mm. Another very powerful athlete. And Yana's straight on the wall. Didn't really have much of a look up. Getting herself all tied up. Who is the left? And now, interestingly, that tape that was down the whole of her left leg is only under the knee now. I find that interesting. Maybe <laughs> it's just me. Oh, Yanya facing out. Going for a different method. And I mean, that's about as static a stand up as yeah. you can get, isn't it? Controlled most of it. Maybe the way the root set is intended. That's certainly what they were doing yesterday when I watched them testing it. Ah, for the show, I see. For the show, of course. <laughs> Chloe goes with a foot into yeah, the pocket. Chloe goes foot first, which will control the move, but I wonder if she's got any space to actually get her hand in that hole now. I don't think she does. She's going to have to drop it as she comes across. A very awkward match, and as we saw earlier, that hold is blocked, so there will not be space for two hands there. Oh, it is enough. Look at that. <laughs> I'll be quiet while she gets the right hand in. I reckon she's going to have to match again. Yeah. So I wonder if this method really has saved her much energy. Yeah, not that efficient. The Yanya tops out boulder two. That's a flash. That was a walk in the park for Yanya. Yeah. Now, the reason that Yanya isn't at the top of the scoreboard is because she hasn't done that boulder three yet. So we're really only going to know when the dust settles on boulder number four where we're at. I'm sure there's mathematicians out there working it out. Chloe looking a little bit tired now. She's still on the same... She's still on the same attempt. So this will definitely be a two-attempt mask at Boulder for Chloe. But she's still fighting. Well, that's the zone for her. This is her Boulder if she can pull it off. Gets the foot in. Oh, no, she can't, though. And she looks like she gave it a lot that go. She's so surprised. The second she came down, I mean, that's a long time to be on a Boulder. Definitely. Two minutes. Try climbing for two minutes on a boulder in your local gym. <laughs> There's, usually it's a couple of seconds. It's a third of a leaf route. Yeah, it, that's <laughs> a really good point, yeah. Jeez. Well, well, that's the difference again we're seeing. And that right hand that Chloe went up to, the chalk you can see is on the underside of it, which means that you're not really holding, but more pushing and pressing. I want to point out there's a break in the beach volleyball that's next to us, and pretty much everyone is watching from the beach volleyball oh, yeah. at the climb. <laughs> I think it was on the screens in the beach volleyball arena yesterday, uh, day before yesterday, the speed climbing was. Awesome. Just big enough our sport here a little bit. And yes, I am biased, I don't care. <laughs> it's been crazy walking around with all the other athletes and walking by the volleyball players and them being about two of me stacked. <laughs> Yeah, I, I keep trying to spot which athlete in which sport. Mm. It's quite hard to do. Yeah. So Chloe had a long rest. She's in for a final attempt unless she needs a couple of goes to get back on That's, first move. This is interesting because whereas Camilla hadn't got the zone, Chloe does have the zone. Mm. So only a top really is going to be worth it. Yeah, for sure. And she clearly thinks she can get to the top. Which is cool. Yeah, she's only got 30 seconds, but that method she originally did took her a long time. I think she's swapped it. She has swapped it. Much more efficient. So, different method. And now, this move is a, a bit trickier because of the position she's in. Up into the her hand to help out. Five seconds, though. Oh, not much time. No, she's going to have to go immediately. She doesn't. 
So a long burn, but the double zone. Getting encouragement there from the Belgian coaches. Yeah. It's quite impressive that Chloe changed her method and nailed it first time as yeah. well. Yeah. She did really well to kind of persevere with the first to make sure she got those zone points. And then to recognize that, oh, maybe that wasn't the most efficient or the best way of doing this and kind of come up with it on the fly pretty quick as well. So this was the first attempt with the foot and then matching it. And that's why I said there wasn't any space. It really didn't look like there was. <laughs> and we're back to Yanya this time. So that was Chloe, this is Yanya. She flashed that boulder out to the grim match. Yanya hasn't really tried yet. She might have to on boulder three. Be very cool to see a top from her there. So, Genia is back and we get to see boulder four for the first time. And Eliska will be on boulder three. Now, as a lead climber, this is a more bouldery boulder. Yeah, I'm not sure this is Eliska's style preferred style as such, but as we saw Chloe kind of tech it out, I, I do think that maybe Alishka could try something similar. True, you don't need that big physical move, you don't have to. But will she try a campus? I think she's going to try to get her feet on. She goes fig four, so obviously they've read it like that. But showing that the fig four is quite a tricky method, actually. Trying both ways. So I think she would have known that the other women, that's the method they were going to try. So she gave it a really good go there, but didn't seem to be her thing. Yeah. Jenny tried to get a toe hook to stop her falling. This is kind of the first bit of coordination we've seen in this round, which is maybe due to the new format. So when you say coordination, what do you mean by that? So I mean moves that are less static, where you have to move more than one limb, body part at the same time. So as we can see, Jenny is going with a hand and a foot at the same time. And it's all about timing, momentum, body positioning. She wasn't looking at that foot at all as well. No. And I think that's one of the trickiest things about coordination moves is that there's so much going on, but you really you can't look everywhere. You can't look at your hand and your foot at the same time. So it's a case of kind of choosing where to focus on when. So Eliska gets through that first sequence and is actually looking really good here. Look, look at that method. Yeah, speaking out every toe scum and you know, a bit of contact with the wall is possible. So she eyes up this, but this is a powerful move and she might not have the energy. Let's see, she's got a boost up towards it with the right hand as well. Gets it just with the fingertips. I haven't really talked about Genia, but she's through that first move. And, and once you learn the coordination moves, it does tend to be a bit easier the second time, third time. Yeah, for sure. Oh, it, this is two back to back. I was wondering if we'd see this with the two zones. And yeah, you've got that right hand, left toe hook, catch combination into a jump into a left hand palm and a right hand side for you. Oh. Yeah, that's as complicated as yeah, it sounds. Like there. I can't even say No, but it's it all. really it's good that you said it like that. It just shows how much is going on. Yeah, and if you think about how hard it is to say it, imagine how hard it is to do it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, let, let's watch this. So she's got that left toe, then bumps the right, and then this is the move you were kind of talking about. Yeah, here we go. She lines it up, and there's a foot plant as well. So oh. there's three parts to that. So complex movement here. I guess. One of the good things you could say in this, with co coordination moves in this format, is that you can have more goes. There's more chances to learn the movement. And, you know, once you do it once, it is generally a lot easier to repeat it because your body kind of has felt the position. A lot of the time, when I'm trying to, you know, piece these moves together, I'll pull into the final end position of the move, and that's a really good guide as to where you need to get to. And Jenny sticks the second coordination move. And is this a third coordination move? They've really gone all out on this boulder. Yeah, nice. A bit more basic, but still. But by that point, your brain is just frazzled. Yeah. You don't want to do any more of that. But she's going to top and out. And top from Jenya. She is psyched. What a way to finish her ball around. Yeah, really strong from her. So she'll move into the lead in a brilliant position. And her mum and sister. <laughs> and Eliska is still going on her climb, and she has time, 25 seconds. And she 
and this is the first time she's been given. She's got the second zone, and just getting a bit too bunched. But she bumps up the standings, and this is going to be really important for her because as more of a lead climber, mm. she's got that to come. Yeah, so she's got her best to come, so this is kind of just collecting as many points and trying to keep up with the rest of the pack. Yeah, just exploding out too many limbs in a small box. Genius top, so three coordination moves in a row, and so difficult to learn that because you've got to learn it, get the sequence down, get the movement, get it into your body, and then do it every yeah, time, three times in a row. Every time. Yeah, that is a textbook coordination boulder. That's your ABC of coordination climbing. Yeah, that last move you see quite a lot in gyms, you know, that le right yes. hand, left hand. Yeah. All the other ones are so complicated. Yeah, for sure. But they are becoming more commonly set in gyms, I would say. And there re it's really cool to see like new climbers doing attempting moves like this. Yeah, for someone like me who's uh, been climbing for a couple of years now, it's uh, it's not something I'm used to doing. You no. know? But you guys, you've kind of grown up doing this. I don't know. I feel like I was a little bit before this. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I've still got a lot to learn. But definitely the younger kids and you know the 16, 18 year olds coming through will have grown up with this being the main style um, of competition bouldering. Yeah, and it's interesting watching them take it into outdoor rock climbing as well. Yeah, going climbing with my teammate Max Mill and outside. He's like, I just want to make every rock boulder comp star. Yeah. I want to paddle dino everything. <laughs> like, Max, we're climbing a rock. <laughs> you just crimp it out like the rest yeah. of us. Stop it. <laughs> An easy campus move for Jesse, another super strong athlete. Let's we'll see what she decides to do for this tricky section. Oh, straight in there. Such good coordination in that as well. I mean, we've got these crazy coordination moves, which are more obviously coordination, but even figuring out which way to flick your hips or when to flick your hips, when to move the arm, there's coordination in a move like that as well. And here we go. This is a flash attempt as well. Oh, interesting. Trying to double bump that right hand. Nia Cramble is trying coordination moves on the final climb. Now this is, with coordination, this is where we might see more of a split in attempts. Um, probably more attempts on this, and so we'll get more decimal points taken away from each athlete. Yeah, and that will lead up towards the end. And remember, this isn't standalone. Lead is next. I think we have a bit of a break before that starts. A break for the athletes as well. So Jess is using one of those painted brushes. You can adjust the angle of the head on those to uh, more accurately brush the bit you want to brush. <laughs> I don't know why you want to know that back at home. <laughs> if you don't know about climbing, there you go. That's what happens. And that's what Mia Crab pulls her coordination move here. Okay, she's done the first one. Let's see how she attempts the second. Oh, easy. Palming down with that left hand. Nicely done by Mia. And lining up for the third. Right, this is easier, but at this point, she's tired, she's done enough and doesn't want to do it again, drops in and catches it. And from here, you'd think it would be a fairly easy move to the top. Let's see. Oh, oh and another, she's another one. one! And she enjoyed that. So she used the toe to stop herself, but she was swinging off there. Yeah, and as we can see, it took her less attempts than Genia, and that's why she's top spot with 80.9 points. So Jessie sticks her tongue out as she tries to figure this out. Another no foot to the zone. Let's see what she let's see if she changes anything for this section. Put in the volcano again. And she's wrapping that zone hold a bit more. Shoulder press to hold that. No. No, tries the same. Looks a bit confused. What do they want from me? Yeah, and she's got two zones, so again, she'll have to figure out whether she can actually do that top. Yeah. And she's still on the map. It's interesting, it's not against the nature of the climber to stop, is it? But no. she does look away off this at the moment. Mm. Yeah, sometimes it can be really hard to walk away because, you know, you're so used to just trying and trying and trying until you succeed in the gym, working boulders, 
And obviously, you want to walk away with the top, but sometimes, you know, maybe the right choice is to just leave it. But hopefully, Jesse can show us how this third ball is done. Yeah, so strong. She campuses up easily to the pocket. Yeah, climbing quicker and quicker through this lower section. Well, she's got to. She's only got 20 seconds on the clock. Out to the crimp. The zone is there. She's already been awarded. She won't get more score for that. 10 seconds. This is going to be snatch and grab and go. Seven. One move away. Come on, Jesse. No, it's not going to be enough. And I think she's kind of figured it out now. Yeah. <laughs> Slapping the mats in frustration. I think she realised that dropping that left foot off would allow her to slap into that left-hand sloper. Here, we see it. Left foot goes, and then maybe a rushed move out left. Oh, heels down, yeah. So she may have figured it if she'd had another minute, but isn't that always the case? <laughs> Just one I more know. time. Just one more minute. One more. So two more athletes on Boulder, three to go. That's Hannah Moyle and Yan Yagambra. Coach giving the normal encouragement. There was Nia Gramble celebrating at the top. Awesome from her. So we pan down, and it is Hannah Moyle and Camila Moroni are next two. Out she goes. Onto the stage, the host pipe man is doing sterling work down there. Yeah. <laughs> Hannah turns and has a look at this. She's good at these kind of power moves. Camila Moroni will have to start the process of figuring out the coordination sequence. You can see there the two tags on that lower volume for Camilla means she needs two points of contact there and two where her left hand is. She had the accuracy there, high up on the hole where she needed that left foot to be. Hannah cruised that bottom move, made it look simple. Across the three, will have to swing. And then she's just getting that left foot where her hand was. Really efficient from her. Really comfortable in that position. Locking that move off, static, choking up with every move. No one has done boulder three yet. Wraps a palm around as much skin as possible. We'll get the six points. Let's see what she can do. A really technical climb, and maybe she'll figure out the body positioning to make these slopes work. Oh, Camilla gets it. Nice work from Camilla. Oh, oh, oh no! Just a little bit too casual. Hannah comes down. I really thought Hannah was about to flash that. <laughs> well, we had a quick start, but I think it's sort of opened up. Now. Yeah, yeah, and it's a bit more interesting than just those flashes at the beginning, so it was worth holding on to. <laughs> Hope you were patient at home. And welcome, if you're just joining us, we're at the European Champs for the Women's Boulder and Lead Competition. My name is Matt Groove, and I'm here with Molly Thompson-Smith in the commentary box, and we are coming up towards the end of the bolder part of this final. The athletes qualifying from the single events that took place earlier on in the week, only the top eight made it through this far. We're having our first real look at the Olympic format that might be used in Paris 2024. So if you're a climbing geek or if you're new to the sport, this is a fascinating thing to watch. Miller controlling that release onto the first zone this time. She's got to figure out that second formation. We seem to miss the right foot. Yeah, and just ended up spinning off there. Kind of still resting it out. Yeah, she's only had one go on it. She thinks she's figured it out enough, needs to milk the rest. 
See her shaking her arms, trying to get some of that pump out, getting herself ready to go again. I once heard uh, something that may not be true, but I'm going to say it anyway, which is if you're climbing to bouldering your limit, you need maybe five to six minutes in order to get that recovery back. Really? So it just makes you realise how hard so these women have to go. I was going to say... <laughs> Go, only go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But it just shows the level you have to sort of fight through. If, let's say you need at least six minutes in order to get that recovery. They just don't have that time. You have to go when you're not necessarily ready. No, and this is where... Ooh. Not a nice ball from Camilla there. This is where maybe being a lead climber might have its benefits in the ball around, you know. Being able like, to handle more moves in a row. Recovery. Yeah, it's a good point. Especially with the longer boulders that we're seeing. For sure. Miller is down again on the coordination move. She's frustrated. Anna Moyle to her left. This is her last oh, attempt. She's only got six tired. seconds. I don't think she's going up. No, she's not. So no top for Hannah, but two zones, which is what she needed. That's pretty much that is what everyone's got, I think. So Yanya Garnbre is the final climber out on Boulder 3 before we say goodbye to that. We'll be almost towards the end of this. And I think Yanya will be really looking forward to this boulder. Yeah. When doesn't she? <laughs> <laughs> Yanya Garmrit, you think after winning so many comps might perhaps be a bit over it, but and people someone said to me today, in fact, is it not boring watching Yanya win all the time? And I was like, no, look, it's like watching Michael Schumacher or, or you know, like mm. Roger Federer in his absolute prime. And one of the coolest things is it might never happen again. That's true. She oh. really is one in a million almost. Yeah, um, and we're in her era. We get to watch it. Yeah, it's super cool. And I also think with every win, like, the next one gets harder to win. The pressure, you know, everyone else is chasing. It's so... I think it's easier to chase than it is to be in the lead, you know? hard not to get complacent but Yanya definitely doesn't and she's just so driven and so passionate about climbing always wanting to be better and push the sport further for all of us and herself yeah the thing is is I don't have to chase it you do and I yeah, can't I imagine how hard that is <laughs> it's so funny when we go training and the guys are like oh, I did that and I can't even touch it I'm like yes <laughs> this is what I have to compete against guys <laughs> but it is totally inspiring Really, really cool to see what's possible. Yeah, well, she's got to get zones, though, on this. Two she needs if she's going to keep in touch. So important boulder for Yanya. And we'll see if this boulder is possible. Yeah, it's very hard at the top, and no one really has offered a solution to it. And Chloe fully eight on boulder number four. So Yanya out, easy for the first couple of moves. Oh, look at Come on. <laughs> One arm the way through that spin. But she's having to work. Tangled up now. Yeah, she is. And this is where she needs to start working. She drops that foot and she's gonna smash into this left sloper. Yeah, and you're one move away. Oh. Oh, she had to work hard for that, but there you go, and she is psyched. The crowd goes wild. I think people are banging on the Dance. Yeah, they're drumming their feet. Oh, that's the hit. Sounds like thunder in the distance, but that's what it is. So 75 points for Yanya. And this was it. Just eyed it up. And it was just stuck to it. There was no real movement. All I could think of is the sound <laughs> as she kind of hits it. That's all <laughs> that I was thinking about. That would have been a very about. satisfying slap, wouldn't it? <laughs> The weird stuff in my head when I'm watching this sometimes. And this is the final move that held it beautifully out, thumb pressing on the slippery surface. And Yanya, our only competitor who could still achieve that perfect round with 100 points. Yeah, are we going to see 100? I'm be sure that's her aim to get a 200 points total for the whole competition. In, in the overall world ranking, she's clean sweeping. Yeah, and you know, technically a world record, a, a world's first as well with the I new know. scoring system. And to make it through to this, um, today's competition, she was first place with 2,000 points. So, oh, <laughs> crazy beat of there from Chloe.
Yeah. Opting to go for a right hand palm instead of the left like all the other women we've seen, I think. Yeah, there you go. She almost stuck it as well, but... With the left hand being not a jug, not a really good hold, there's so much rotation um, and she's just not quite got the strength in the left hand to hold it. So Chloe wincing a bit, she brings the left foot up, as you would, because it's a long stretch. The back on already. Yeah, she's got a minute 20, so let's see if she can figure out the second time. Oh, oh and she almost holds it. I think that's the problem with these almost cryptic coordination moves. You have a go, it feels possible, and it's hard to stray away from that, really, especially when you've not got much time to figure it out. Yeah, because these athletes don't get the privilege of having a TV screen back in the uh, area they wait. This is on site for that. Well, not on on site. I always get confused about this. On site or flash? Yeah. On site. On site. Yeah, yeah, on site. Even though they've looked at it, it's still on site. Yeah. They haven't been told how to do it. Yeah, for sure. My brain went soggy there. <laughs> so Chloe bumps right. Interesting how she does that move as well. Not quite as dynamic as the others. And now this, though, so shouldery. Yeah, she hasn't got it yet, only one. It needs to come together now for her if she wants the second zone. She's going to try the same method. And now she tries the method we've seen successful, and she screams because she realises the error in her way. Frustration at the end of Chloe's volume, her volume around. Yeah, so no second zone for Chloe. She knows her score. It's going to be mid-pack for her going into the lead. And that being Chloe's stronger discipline is probably not where she wanted to be finishing her bold round. Now, this was Yanya's flash, and just a flash, everyone. And no one else has done this. Yanya just flashed it. Just want to make that very clear. Up to the top, bumped, thumb pressing in, matched it to control. It's that wasp again. There are wasps that keep cropping into the shot. <laughs> Sam Abazu almost uh, had a wasp incident where it buzzed around his head doing a boulder. And I keep seeing them, they're out there. And we watch again as Yanya tops out. Great work from her. Big fist bump, putting herself in a great position. Mia and Yanya still in the lead. I mean, I know we've not seen everyone on their last boulder, but they had a really good round. Doing really well. So, at least get runs out. Now, we go back to having just one athlete on the stage because, of course, we've run out of boulders. So, this is a bit more like a traditional final from now on for the last couple of minutes of this. Five o'clock is the scheduled time for the lead, so there'll be a bit of a pause after this. If you're wondering when to have a tea break, that's it. Liska out, almost got the toe. Having one of those classic tester goes where you're lining up the move, just feeling how much you need to give, whereabouts the holds are. Getting closer, maybe you just bring that toe a little higher up the hold. It will be a different position on that hold where Liska will need to get her toe hook. She's, I think, a bit taller than most of the other girls. And she's currently down at the bottom, so she would like to get at least two zones on this to put herself in a better position. She does stick it third time. Rubber on the top of her climbing shoes, helping with that move. And she spots the method straight away and has a really good first go at that move. Yeah, good work. And that has immediately bumped her up above Camilla Moroni by getting that zone. Now, it doesn't matter if you touch a zone hold, the important part of the zone hold and to secure the points from it is that you need to hold it and use it. So that might mean lifting a foot up once you've held it or moving your hips up. And so, as we saw, Alishka touched that zone hold but didn't quite control it, so she won't be given that, those points just yet. 
and that is something that changed quite recently. It used to be that you could just touch it, get away with it, or maybe just, I remember Judge telling me if they watch the tendons go on your arm and tense, <laughs> they'd give it. Not anymore. She gets through that first move. Oh, but slips going over. That's the worst feeling when you're climbing, isn't it? When no. a foot pops like that. No, it's, it's always when you give it a lot of energy as well. Yeah, it's not always just a straight slip, because sometimes, I think it's easy for people to be like, oh, it was a slip, uh, and that was it. But it, it's sometimes to do with the way you're moving or positioning mm. yourself or how tired you are. Yeah. Slips happen for a reason sometimes. I think Elishka just wants to get back to that move again, and so she's probably not climbing super carefully anymore. And, you know, getting tired, getting more frustrated, it all adds and it all builds, and it means that you know, you might not put your foot in exactly the right position where it needs to be. And on boulders like this, the smallest margins, the subtleties are really important. And yeah, that was a really nasty fall. She came down. Molly's question from someone about fear of falling. <laughs> well, see how she deals with this the second time. I'm sure she'll feel that tomorrow. Yeah. But this is the last time that these women will climb a boulder, so they're going to give it everything in this comp anyway. Spinning down, that's not enough. One minute on the clock. She still hasn't got that final zone looking at her skin, falling off like this, where the hands just slip out of the holds, takes so much skin. Yeah, those fingers rubbing off. Ah, down with the left toe. Eyes up the jump. You can see movement getting a bit more frantic, a bit more desperate. Yeah, is it in her head here? Looking tired now, shaking the head. Well, she desperately wants these six points, you know that'll do it. It will probably get her up the leaderboard if she does, so it is important. But now I think she's going to finish it. Well, she gave it everything in those last couple of seconds. But don't despair if you're a fan of her, because she has got her best discipline coming up next, that lead. She's won gold in lead competitions before, so she's got potential. Definitely. World Cup winner from... Brian Song. Last year? Yeah. Last year. Jessie Pilts out to the coordination boulder. Last three athletes on the final boulder here. <laughs> Jessie Pilts gets a big reaction from the German crowd. Innsbruck fairly close to Munich. You sometimes get the feeling some of the Austrian athletes have been adopted by the German yeah. crowd. <laughs> She's in sixth at the moment. Oh, yeah. Going all the way back, but making it work. And taking a right hand down to control that release. Really good idea. How impressive is Mia Cramble and Zhenya Kazbakova? Still at the top. Oh, Jessie going for the same method as Chloe. We'll see if she sticks with it. Yeah, really good separation so far. Yeah, we were all a bit worried after those two boulders went quickly at the beginning, but it's turned into a good comp for this. Yeah, add a coordination boulder in, <laughs> yeah. and you'll split the field. Come on, Jessie, get up! Especially when with four coordination moves back to back. Yeah, it's a bit much, if you ask me, <laughs> but, you know. Right, Jessie back on the wall. Got the first one easily. Yeah, much easier now. Oh, slow release there with that left foot. You can see creeping down, squatting your body. And she's figured it out much quicker than Chloe. And she knows that that's the method. Really impressive that she was able to switch so quickly. So, so instinctive um, to know that, oh, maybe this wasn't, didn't feel the right way. So I'm going to try something different. But Jesse pulls back on once more. Got lots of time. Something didn't look quite right there. <laughs> she wasn't set then. There now you is. You can see she went much further down and left to get enough momentum to throw herself towards the right that time. Easy work from Jesse. So that's the two really hard moves done, and she's got the six-point zone. And she's going to try and control this move? No, I think she's realised that it's easier to just pop to it like that. 
It's a long way. It's all around the corner, around that volume. It's really important that you squeeze as much as you can with that left hand. But, oh, and she goes to the top of that finish hole, but makes it work. Yeah, I was waiting for the toe to come in, but she didn't need to use it to stop that swing. And that's got her up into second position, which is perfect for her. Because she's a very strong lead climber, as we saw the other day, coming home with a silver medal? Silver medal. Great work from Jessie Pills, because if we presume, and this is presuming, of course, that Yanya is going to climb this boulder, then that will be Yanya at the top, then me, then Jessie, yeah. top three. Which puts her in a really good position for this I'm, lead route coming up soon. I'm trying to work out who's a better lead climber in my head. It's like, on paper, <laughs> Jessie beats Mia Crample, on yeah, paper. on paper. But then anything can happen, really. And I guess that's why climbing is so exciting. I said when I came into this fight, I was like, I'm not going to make predictions, because I know I'll <laughs> look like an idiot. want predictions. OK, well, that's... Yeah, OK, well, we'll give predictions at the end, all right? We'll do that in a minute. But certainly, you really, it's, it's so much different from a, from a single comp. You start thinking one step ahead. Yeah. Let's see how coordinated Hannah Moyle is feeling. Of course, I forgot about Hannah Moyle, because she could also jump to the top of this leaderboard. That's true. <laughs> so much going on. She's got 25 points she could gain from this boulder. Yeah. So, here we go. Eyes up. The Crouches first move. down and nails it. A little bit of a backwards turn just for some style points there. You can see how flexible Hannah is, reaching down, going oh. further into the split and completely controlling that release. Yeah, that's a lot harder than she just made it look. Yeah. Oh, nearly got it first time as well on that. Nods to herself. Knows she can do this move. Yeah, there's a, I don't, there's a bit of luck in a move like this, isn't there? Because you do just need to hit the right point perfectly. Yep. That's why flashes are a bit less likely. Of course, you've got to have the skill to do it in the first place, but if you're all at that level, then, yeah, sometimes you just don't get it on an attempt. But it's one of those so things. There's so much you can learn from trying the move, and I think that's why it's really hard to flash these moves. But then, you know, like Hannah just easily does this first move again. Yeah, didn't need that adjustment the second no, time. Exactly. So chalks up, gets ready. Has she learned? Yes. Definitely has. <laughs> so smooth. This move we know is a bit easier. She does get it, but the last move is tricky. She opts for to static it out, and I was wondering if anyone would do this, but there you go. No hesitation from Hannah Moore. She saw that early on, I think. Jumps to the top of the leaderboard. All right, so now on paper. <laughs> now on paper, I know. We could go round and round. But a fantastic all around for Hannah. Yeah, she runs off. I think got confused which way she went there and then corrected herself, went the right way. Okay, so Hannah Moyle, great from her. Once she just, just the speed that she learned that movement was amazing. Yeah. Sure, a very natural mover. It comes so naturally to her and she learns real quick. And I think that's one of the most important skills for being a really good boulderer. I like the fact that this boulder especially is, is the sequence through the bottom section is fairly similar for yeah. all of them, but that top move can be done in different ways. Yeah, and I like how progressive it is. People go try something, they're like, oh, maybe not that, or maybe I need to give it a little bit more in this direction. And for most people, we've seen them get higher and higher, which is, which is pretty cool. So good work from Hannah Moyle. She waves to the crowd. Final athlete, final boulder. <laughs> They're enjoying that spray, cooling <laughs> off in the heat. Hasn't got any cooler out there. I thought the clouds were going to come in at one point, but they've sort of gone now. Oh, it's still very hot. Yeah, the walls in the shade. And here is Yanya Garnbrett. She is out. So she's obviously sitting in fifth position. But the fact she's sitting in fifth position, having not done the final climb. I mean, yeah, it's pretty good going already. And I wonder if we'll see that perfect 100 points. That's a big ask, isn't it? Or it is. Four coordination four, four moves. Four coordination, but if there's anyone who can do it, <laughs> it's this woman right here. Right, let's see it. Come on, Yanya. Let's see if we can get a first 
perfect score with a new decimal system, shall we? Doesn't really matter, but it would be cool to see. So she gets the first one first Looks time. Like barely a coordination move. But this is the tricky one. Let's see which way she goes. No! Oh. But it won't happen at this comp. Oh, she holds her back there. Yeah, she looks a little bit in pain. Mm, and straight down to her coaches as well, still holding her back. That's a bit worrying. So, well, oh, it's just, yeah, just Oh, and shouts out in pain by the looks of things. I really hope she's okay. Because Yanya can be a bit too tough for her own good sometimes. You rarely see her in pain, but she must be. Yeah, for sure. She's back on the wall already. Well, she'll be definitely getting treatment for that in a bit. It's the hook. I think she'll know as well, with injuries like that, sometimes you just have to get going quickly because your body will then start to freeze up a bit. Sure. And that time she just jumped so much higher into that move. You can see her arm was in a 90-degree lock. And here we are. Super easy. A little shake of the head. So, almost the perfect score. 99.9 .9 for Yanya Gambra. Great from her, she leaves the stage. Still, obviously, a bit with that back, and I think there's a bit that she doesn't really want to show how hurt she is as well. It's such a big factor in climbing comp skin. People look at you like you're an alien when you say it, and it's, because it's like trying to drive a Formula One car on banana skins. <laughs> That's a great analogy. All right, so we got our first look at boulder number one. Now you can see each limb on one of those blue holds, so you have to control the start position, and then so you see his body isn't moving. So. There we go, he's patrolled underway. The judges will stop him if they don't think he's begun in the correct way. An awkward beginning, this pushing up using heels and toes to try to get stood up on that initial volume. Puts that left foot backwards, and now he has to be slow up to this zone, which is dual text. No, no text, just no text. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no text. Yeah, so he's got a little balance, possibly a little. Right, coordination move, Let's plant the foot across. Right, so once he's in, he then needs to sort of jump, hop to the left. And coordination, I mean, look, surely it's all coordination, so how is this a different kind of a move? Yeah, I guess that's a good point, actually. It's, uh, I guess, any time that, like, three or more points will kind of leave the wall, you're kind of, and you've got to reconnect with the wall very quickly, then. So it's sort of limbs moving in different directions. That's what we'd, we would call the coordination move, I guess. But yeah. Yes, you're right. I guess any move where you're going slightly fast is, has an element of coordination. Yeah, it's hard to uh, be uncoordinated and be a pro climber. They are so talented. And, and remember, we're not only watching the world's best, but these boulders are very difficult, really tricky. And it's the time that plays such an important factor. And you can see it ticking away on the right-hand corner. The athletes only have four minutes to try to work out the sequence for these climbs. And Medjie, let's see if he can do the second time. So he's decided not to use that first zone hold at all now. Um, <laughs> he's decided it was hindering his progress more than anything. But once you've held it once, then that's it, you have the zone. So. Yeah, and the, uh, you can see the 5.9, that's because he has six points, and minus one for the failed attempt, and now that will change to 24.9, so a top, which is worth 25, minus 0.1. Great work from That's a great start from him. Right. That looks like a bowler that's very hard to do first go. Yeah, it is. And it's interesting when that happens because it's hard to do first go, but you kind of need to get it as quickly as possible and lock that movement in, especially if yeah. we know that you can do it second go. Let's watch this. This was a successful attempt. The hop, the little flick back yeah. with the leg. Yeah, just to kill that rotation out of there. And the heel hooks in, stands up into that 25 points, so good work from Mejdi. And that will just settle him down a little bit, won't it? Hopefully, a little bit. Anyway. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> as settled as uh, Mejdi gets. Yeah, exactly. Oh, he'll be really fired up for this. <laughs> so, Sam Abizu. Spit my words out. Yeah, and Sam Abizu has had a very, very good competition at the moment as well. Although he was only 23rd in the lead, he was second in the boulder comp and is such a powerful, strong climber and good at these style of moves. 
That'd be right. He's won a lot of youth comps, I think. Right? Yeah, I mean, he's been there uh, kicking around on the youth scene for a while, starting to move into the senior circuit this year, especially in the boulder. But yeah, I mean, his last, when I mean, he won the Continental Cup uh, oh, yeah, in Austria. Course. So he's, he's used to winning, and he's just making this transition into the senior circuit and doing well at the moment. So he's pushing up with that left hand, palms down. It's blind for the foot, using the knee. And again, the sides of these volumes that he's stood on are all no texture. So <laughs> there's nothing to help him get up. It's all leg power on there, leg and hip. So he's been awarded the zone already. He can now ignore that, move on. Kicks, and he does do this move first time. So if he can finish this off, He's going to be jumping above Medji shout score straight away, but this is a different method to Medji. He's oh, been a very bit of fingernail under the edge of the hold there. Oh. <laughs> the root set has said to me that they hope they don't find an edge. Well, I think an edge has been found. So Sam Avazu, and you can see his score of 25, no falls, and therefore is the perfect score. The full 25 points for him, and a perfect start to his boulder competition. A jump over the left, a flick with the right leg to halt that swing. And then look at this, right underneath. Oh, he's thumbnail, thumbnail underneath the hold. Oh, whatever it takes. <laughs> yeah, true. Oh, yeah, both of us cringing here in the commentary box. Well, Philip Schenk is our next athlete out. So, Italy. Get your supporters clapping here as he comes out. Has a little look over, turns, and he just rereads this boulder. It's been a while since he's seen it. Yeah, he'll want to take a little deep breath before he pulls onto this, so I'll just calm the nerves. So. And talking about pressure, as we go on, he will have known that the other athletes have topped it out by the crowd sounds. So, and also the fact that they come back in quickly. Right? Yeah. yeah, they didn't use the full four minutes. So the pressure is on, and it will carry on increasing for the other athletes if Philip manages to do it as well. So although there's no texture on it, you don't really need to pull on it. It's just touching. But that left foot just helps you balance just a little bit. Skated down that slippery surface with that left foot. I suspect it was almost added as a, oh, we need a first serve. Right. <laughs> Yeah, it's one of the first times we're using this system of two zones. We did have it in Barcelona for a test event way back at the beginning of the year. But this is the first time we're really seeing it with all of the international athletes. And Philip not making it work that first time. Which shows how impressive Sam Abazu's flash was. Yeah, it was really impressive. I think the key to the move is to stay so close to the wall that and then just whip that leg round to kill the rotation like the shoulders. So Sam, sorry, Philip Schenk needs to get this now in order to stay in touch with that first and second position. Matches with the feet and creeps upwards. He can't pop up to that zone hold. And yet, Sam sort of ignored it. Oh, sorry, not Sam. Medji, uh, Medji ignored it the second time. Philip is using it again, just briefly though. Let's see if he's figured this one out. He's carrying a lot of momentum yeah, through that move. But say, looks like he's going a little bit too fast. So very easy to say from the comfort of the commentary booth, but give us a joy of this job. <laughs> we, can, uh, <laughs> we can tell them what they're doing wrong yeah. from afar. They can only have a go at us later on. So, a bit too much speed. So, how do you slow a movement down, though, if you're sort of falling through the air? Uh, I guess the initial movement, so it's kind of more... I guess the first part of the cartwheel, it's like... So it's I always joke that modern pump holding is just cartwheels, which Max quoted me on his Instagram the other day. <laughs> <laughs> so, that initial move needs to be slower. You're starting off a bit fast into it. Let's watch to see if he's if he makes the adjustment. Yeah, and the coaches, although they can shout things, it's hard to A hear yeah, them. You're not allowed to coach while they're actually on the boulder. So it's 
He has to work this out for himself as the minute mark comes up. So the eyes are up. Looks like a big lead up to it. That was a uh, bit slower. Better. I think it's him trying to bring his other hand in that's kind of twisting him off. And the way he ran back to his chalk bag there, you can sometimes tell when an athlete thinks he's figured it out. Yeah, he's like, oh, that was it. Yes. And he looked quite enthusiastic when he came back. He's straight on. Also running out of time. So he's lost 20 seconds. So he comes down now. Out. No job for him. So that's no top. I first athlete to fail to get to the end. He's got to do some work on the others now to uh, make that up. Yeah, so now although the score says three, he will get minus points for those attempts. That will show up at the end. That's why it displays three. I think it's only on the attempt that you get that zone. Mm. So he'll still have three for his. So, awesome work from Philip, and not quite enough to get the top. So, out he goes. Jakob Schubert onto the stage, waves to the crowd. <laughs> Jesse Pilts yeah, shoes Schubert competing every day. No. Third place yesterday. Yeah, she did brilliantly. Third? No, second. Second place, yeah. Second place, sorry. Sorry, yeah, Jessie. I'm watching Jessie. I mean, it was so good to see her back. And then again, another one really experienced out there. Let's see how Jakob gets on with this lad. Okay, he's struggling a little bit with flexibility. Right. Yeah, a little bit. So he's kicking the legs right and left, right? especially if like, got to have moves. He's... Yeah, Jakob seems to have been a little bit frustrated all week, just not quite finding the flow, especially on the boulder points. Yeah, a lot of the boulders look like they've not had a lot of flow to them, like been a lot of, kind of big foul for moves and kind of a bit of switching around and trying to find positions. So, so Jakob though goes again. He needs to dig into his experience banks and uh, find a way. Sequence. So awkward. A little bit taller as well than some of them. And you can see his knees right up by his face and then gets stood up. Yeah, he's the tallest out of the athlete so far. Yeah, sometimes height can be an advantage, sometimes a disadvantage. It's, it just depends on the climb itself. It changes the way you have to do some moves. Settle his brain a little bit. Jumps down, kicks the feet to the left, flips them around, and then <laughs> looks yeah. at the crowd and the time. And there we go, the 5.9 being displayed. It's the heel underneath. Is the full 25 score minus that attempt to the top? Yeah, it's very easy, very easy to get excited in that last move and just push yourself off the finishing holes. Like, do well to calm himself down there. It's the hardest thing to do in climbing is to go from pulling really hard to kind of balancing, and you've got all this adrenaline flying around. And that's the leap out to the left. Really had to bring that right foot all the way through. Touch the volume. A slightly different method than Jakob. He missed out the kind of intermediate hold and just went for the full big hop. Well, full commitment from him. He's got a good score. Definitely in touch as that first boulder is done. And now the men's individual event. Nikolai Uznik will come out. And Medjdi Schalk is in action on boulder number two. Unlike... 
single event finals. We're having two athletes climbing at the same time. And there's been a bit of chat about whether the athletes can sort of learn something by looking at the other climber whilst they're going, and if that's an advantage or disadvantage. And it's one of those things we might tweak and change as we move this yeah, forward. Yeah, I always say to the athletes that if you're looking at another athlete on another problem, then you're not focusing on the one in front of you. So <laughs> stop it. <laughs> but yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, I guess on the way back to isolation, then potentially there is a chance to have a look. Oh, what's, that? what's the next boulder? But, but you can't learn. I think they're always taking them off to the left of the wall if they're coming on, or they're climbing from the right side of the left to the left hand side to the right hand side, sorry. And they're always taking them off to the left hand side. So there shouldn't be the opportunity to do that. And what you can learn from like a snapshot isn't a lot anyway. So Mejdi comes down trying to get the toe hook in. It's quite. Tricky first move there, got to kind of kick the right foot out and underneath the hole. Yeah, again, a little, a little coordination move here. So it's hand and foot at the same time in this case. So Nikolai as well couldn't make that. That's that intermediate hold Dave was talking about that, uh, that Jakob missed. So they're just almost using it as a guide just to help them go again. So look, Medjie getting the toe in, more static than that now, this is the big move to the pinches. He's got the first zone. It looks like he's running to go wide. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, so that's what you spotted. Instead of yeah. using the two close pinches, yeah. he's gone out with the right. Gets awarded the zone as well. Let's see how hard this left move is. Still screwing underneath, perhaps. It's hard to see. Oh, I don't think there is. <laughs> so it's just flat, and he does drop the top, bringing the hands into match. Yeah. Although he did get two hands on that, there wasn't the body control on it. So he needs to be stable. And Nikolai manages the jump to the left again, just slowing down that movement, making it work. Now can't rush the top. And he does it slowly. Oh, he's gone on top of the he fingernails. <laughs> Three things, and it is awkward this move, it's not easy. Oh, yeah. no, no, no texture on this hole at all. And all on the left foot. And Nikolai gets the 25 minus the one attempt to the top. He claims to be terrible at slabs, yeah. He basically won the European Championships on two slabs, so uh, <laughs> his excuse is gone. <laughs> he can't say that anymore. So Mejdi is left by himself as we come to a minute and a half left on this boulder. It's around the corner, trying to work out the sequences. And it is that last hold, it's just coming in with the match. Yeah, send him down. I think he'll probably do it this time. Like, he'll make that little adjustment. He's going to rest up for a little bit. So, shaking out. The timing is so important, isn't it? And how do you train these athletes to time properly? Because it's difficult to know how long to rest and then when to actually start climbing. Yeah, I guess it's just a feeling from doing these things and you just learn your body and you learn how you feel and it's, it's in this situation he's starting to run out of time and he's going or how long it will take to lose boulder like do I leave myself enough time that I can potentially fall off the move lower down it's a balancing point yeah let's see if he's got it right if we come up to 35 seconds he's already got the zone points out with a big jump right and left Oh, and does snatch towards that pinch and just rush that, rush that match in a little bit. Yeah, probably he might have another sprint go. <laughs> oh, he's yeah, got time. Yeah. He's going to have to really motor here. I mean, 17 seconds. So Mejdi will have to be very dynamic to get this done in the time. 10 seconds. This is the move he fell on. Gets it this time. 5-4. It's going to have to be so quick on the final match. Goes out three seconds and it was just a little too yeah. rushed at the end. Another five seconds. Yeah. So Medji a little disappointed, just the two zones for him. Well, at least unlike a normal semi-final round now, he's now got sort of 15, 20 minutes to calm himself down and reset and get the adrenaline out of the system from that. Yeah, he was never quite on it, was he? But good effort, right? at the dying end of his round there. And this was Nikolai's top. Jumps over with the left, two hand movements. And then just calms himself down once he's got the slap. Reaches up. It's just a thumb underneath. Thumbnail again. Oh. 
I mean, I'd ask you how to train that, but there's not a lot you can do, is there? <laughs> Athletes do, though, train on... Well, I mean, I've seen four millimeter edges used. I haven't seen anything smaller than that. No, I don't think so. <laughs> the four millimeters is pretty vicious on the fingers. Try doing a pull up on a four millimeter edge. <laughs> Right, Alberto Ginez Lopez, the Olympic champion, runs out. And interestingly, he's the only one in this field who's competed in this exact format because he won the Barcelona test event. Oh, yes, of course. So he's a bit more experienced, which won't play a huge part, but might just give him a bit of confidence coming into this. And he's underway with that press upwards. Very smooth, Alberto. Sam Abazu, I think he might like this ball. As he falls straight away, of course. Come on, Sam. <laughs> so into the zone. He'll get the points for that as he uses it. And Alberto as well. Uses it into the first zone perfectly. Oh, and oh, Sam uses a different pinch. Two pinches. Both ways work. <laughs> Gets the toe hook in. And Alberto falls. Sam is on for a flash here, matches the slippery surface, and now he's got to go underneath this. One in, there's that match. Body position thing, isn't it? Because if, yeah. you've got your, if you've got all the weight on your feet and then you let go of that left hand, you're always falling. The foothold also pushes you leftwards, which makes it even more powerful. So. They're really bicep -y. Grab. So Sam brushes the hold. And Alberto is back on the boulder. So he's learnt from that first attempt. Oh, no, he hasn't quite. But he's getting closer. Almost held that. Not bringing that right foot round in a flick as much as the others did. So he lands with the left. Oh, he's coming round. Yeah, I think mean, the body was coming with it, so that's kind of such a flat hold that you're hitting when you land that as soon as your body comes down, you slide out of it. Yeah, so as you come from right to left, it just opens up, opens up your hand, and that's when you peel off. And look how physical that is, oh, that right hand. It is, is it totally no text under there? Uh, I think there is texture in there. It just wraps around quite a lot on those veins. So you're going to almost go deeper into it, perhaps. Alberto is up and standing. It's one of those moves when you do the move, they feel so easy. And you think, why have I fallen off this three times? It's like... <laughs> and now we know that this move is tricky. It's got a sting in the tail. Going underneath it as well. That fingernail will be in action. Matches it. So I don't think anyone's actually fallen off that move yet, but <laughs> I didn't want to say it at that point. <laughs> it looks like the hardest move in it, and I don't think it is. It's just no, because it's, it's such a, it's a, a nasty balance. thing. Yeah. yeah. Just standing on one leg. What great is that? Yeah, it's easy. <laughs> <laughs> so Sam Abbasi jumps up to these thin pinches, making that move look really simple. Final part of this boulder that's hard. No one topping it out at the moment. Crosses through. That's the toe. There's rubber across on top of his shoes that helps with that move as he kicks right. Quite hard. It seems like the same move. There wasn't a lot he did differently. So is it just a sort of a physicality in that in that movement? He's not quite getting right, or do you think he yeah, should adjust the turn? It's a really high undercut, like you're taking that by your face. Like, you normally, if you do a bicep curl, it's by your waist, and you're doing it above your head. So, <laughs> there's a whole lot more than bicep in there as well. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. I mean, imagine doing a bicep curl at your head. That's a really good example. And that is the hold. You can see it's half no text, and there is a texture at the back. French coach. French coach, Nico Januel. He really goes through it with his athletes. He's always really emotional with them. And Alberto, once again, the nail move at the end. 
Celebrations from Alberto, he gets the job done. So, first time we see Luka Popica from Slovenia as he comes out onto the stage. He's such a good lead climber. Yeah, he's incredibly strong in the prints. Like, just looks like he can rest on anything with, a, with an edge on it. And... Well, it's like the end it's like of Bolton. So much there. endurance. Like... So, he can go for days. And Philip Schenk didn't get the top on Boulder number one. So, he's got a little bit of work to do coming into the second climb. Rocks up. No one's really had a lot of trouble with this move. It might have looked a bit yeah, yeah, it's a, a little bit fighty. It's there to make you feel a bit uncomfortable. It's like around. It's not that hard. I say that hard, but you know, if you put it in your local climbing gym, a lot of people would struggle with it. Oh, near it. I've seen the end of it. So Philip goes up to the narrow pinches. So he's stepping through with the feet. It's funny that we watched them read the roots backstage for such a long time, yeah. and then after he comes out and does something totally different yeah. from everyone else. I think after all that discussion, they'd all have the same idea. But Sometimes it changes on the boulder, though, doesn't it? It's the, an yeah, you just have an instinct that, oh, this feels right, and you've got to try it and fully commit to that, whatever it is that you've decided. And maybe they underestimated this boulder looking at it and viewing. Like, they were talking about boulder two, boulder three. And I wonder if they just thought this looks easy, having watched the women's yesterday. Like, the first boulder is very easy. So. All right, all relative. But. Yeah, exactly. I mean, looking at the scores, it's, it's certainly doable. Five of them getting it done. So down he creeps. Let's see how he does this. Can you bring that right leg through? Nice. It looks like it opens up your body more at the end. Yeah. Yes, it pushes your hips out from the wall. And then you have to rotate back round at the end of the movement as well. It was interesting to see when the athletes change their beta. He's halfway through this now, so he's going to do it. This is almost the time. Yeah. Again, it's a feeling. It depends how close he feels to doing that method. You might be like, oh, I'm going to stick that now and then stick with it, or you might go, actually, that's not working. Not working. And one of the other athletes, they can't see how the others have done it, so it's not like they can learn. And for all he knows, that is the way. You know, he might have just thought, that's it. Yeah. Maybe he chatted about it with some people. So, Philip Schenk has the six from getting into the second zone the first time. Surprising that they gave him that. Yeah. Yeah, it's up to the judges if they award those zones. That's definitely a six. So. Just one minute left. Luca is having no luck on that slab. Philip Schenk, though, now nears the end. He really needs to get this. Right hand on it. Way further over than the others. Not finding very much over there. No, that's a rethink it. So frustrating, you're like incredibly close to it and yet so far away. Right hand through, sits on his legs. And look, he did touch that final hole with two hands, yeah. but that's not going to be enough from the judges. No, again, it needs to be stable is the word they use. Yeah, and stable can be debated, of course, <laughs> exactly what <laughs> all that means. So, Luca doesn't manage to get it done, neither does Philip. And something that we noticed yesterday with the women is that you need to have a good boulder round coming into the lead, because you leave yourself a lot to do. And for yeah. both of these guys, well, for Philip, certainly not getting either of those first two, it's going to have some work later on. We are early days, though, of course, a long way to go. So I'm just going to use a little tiny screen on the end of the no, volume. Foot. It looks like there might be a little black screw on the very end. To, to sort of squat onto, yeah. Just to get some downward pressure to push back into the 
This is Luca. It's the first move. <laughs> friction a little bit that. Face right against the slab. Yanya actually hit her face on the slab the other day, took the fall and banged it on the way down. Well, first time we're going to see Adam Ondra climb. He comes out and behind him is Jakob Schubert. And although they're not on the same climb right now, how many times have these two been in comps together? It's appropriate backdrop, isn't it? Two warriors yeah. going, to, going into battle. Exactly. It's really good to see. I sort of I love the youth coming through, but it's nice to see some of the more experienced. And I don't want to say old because they're younger than me, both of these, but uh, they're sort of more experienced. Let's just say it like that. It's a nice one. Yeah. And one of the first time in the world's time, nine C outdoors, which is the hardest grade there is in sport climbing. Jakob launches to the pinches. Doesn't use the toe. Going for pure physicality. Nice to for brushing going off the upper cut. Yep. <laughs> nice to see brushes back. It was a period during COVID times when it was just the athletes who had to do it. And those brushes are beautiful. Take a look at them if you can. That was a, a competition by a local climber called the Boulder Belt Gym. Whoever uh, designed the best and painted the best brushes got free membership. It's really nice. Really nice. Yeah, and then that, they're gorgeous. You see, I don't know. He didn't quite stick that move. You can see quite what he was doing. Rotated out before he got got to the hole. Adam's frame is so different from some climbers. So, that, that thing of you know, the old approach to not really training your legs and I remember that you look at back in the 80s and you had climbing with tiny yeah. little skinny legs. Adam is he's got some muscle down there. Yeah. And his shoulders as well compared to what he used to be when he first appeared in the season. But he really changed his physical his physicality. Jakob comes towards his final move, thugging his way through it. And he sticks the jump this time. Jakob looks close, going really high on it. Oh, oh that's, that's no sure casual. <laughs> and we'll sit down and take the <laughs> We did, so that sort of Anne Adam at the same time tops yeah. up. Well, look, we talked about two warriors, and look, fist bumps from them. Both of them getting the boulders done. That move from Jakob there was so casual. Yeah, that was total instinct from Jakob there. He hadn't planned that. He was just fighting to try and get into a position where he felt stable. You can read it, read it as much as you want, but sometimes you just have to make something up. <laughs> well, we're going to watch Jakob's final climb here. So he bumped up right into those big wide pinches. Had an undercling, then stood up high, 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 and realised almost that he, he could bring that left foot up. And then, <laughs> easy. Like a meerkat <laughs> popping out of a hole. Jakob Schuber tops out Boulder 2. Come in for Schuber, the Austrian legend. <laughs> he enjoyed that, didn't he? And this is Adam Ondra. The good footwork. Oh, really high on that. Everyone has been creeping with their fingernails. Oh, what is Adam holding on to here? The tape, I think. Yeah. Nothing. And then that was the moment. That is so good to see. Adam, Adam is having a good time at this Munich come. So Nikolai Uznik is out and Mezdi Schalk is back. Yeah, first look at this third boulder. Yeah, and I can't wait to see this because I really don't know how to approach it. If I was walking up to this thing, I just I could walk away and watch someone else do it. It's really complicated. <laughs> 
I mean, it just see how instinctive it is and whether it just something works or whether it's just a total fight. So Medley starts squatted down. You can see four lines towards the first hold. That's where he has to start. And it's really overhanging. Look at Arch's back is. This is Nikola Uznik and Bolder. Two, he's nice to get turned around. It's a big thuggy slap out. Elbow busting compression. <laughs> Now, the zone hold is pretty much everything attached to that giant volume above his head, apart from the one right underneath. Yeah, like one black bar underneath isn't part of it. So Medjian, almost a chimney position. That is, would count as the zone. Then he has to rotate again. Oh, the jump into what looks like a missed, jug. He's missed out some holes from... There we go. Easy. Well, it's maybe not, not as complicated as we thought when you miss them all out. That'll do wonders for Messi's score. Yeah, there he goes, jumping up. 55.7 in total for him. Nikolai is alone on the stage. His vision to do something a totally different way to what seems to be on the wall is always so impressive. So the whole there, I'm just going to jump to it and not use all this. Like, yeah, the way he and his teammate Oriane Berton climb is quite yeah. similar. They just spot stuff. Like two different different things things. Exactly. exactly, yeah. Yeah, and climbing, I think, is changing. I especially most of the young climbers are like that now, though. They spend so much time jumping around and playing. And... Yeah, and gyms, they're setting more boulders like that. So yeah. they're growing up with that kind of a style. Yeah, the size of his hands as he slaps through. So, a fairly high scoring round all in at the moment. Heels off that slope. Did you see um, Adam on this one a few times time? See. Starting into that undercut, it's a little bit easier for him. It's a little bit lower down. Yeah, we had to see Afriet so high on it. The only athlete to top it out. Oh, yes. Coaches enjoyed that one. Well, we're coming up towards the halfway point in this boulder final. has got less than a minute. I think we need more coaches' time going on. I think there's almost more passion and emotion going on in the pit than on the wall. The athletes are like very controlled, and <laughs> I don't know the how coaches you... are like leaping around. And <laughs> I don't know how you do it. I'd be so nervous yeah. and just so uh, I wouldn't be able to control myself. I don't know. Yeah, watching Max in the Brixton final was more stressful than any climbing combat I've ever done. <laughs> Nikolai uses the toe this time. That looks better for him as he goes out to the slope. Then adjusts the feet, swings over to the right, matches. He looked down, hoping there was a foothold to help him push into that undercut. Yeah, not to be found. Well, Jakob Schubert, by topping that out, has left himself in a really good place. So there's a couple to come on that boulder. Alberto Hines Lopez, Luca Potica, and Adam Ondra still to come on boulder number two. So there's a lot of pressure on Nikolai in this round, isn't there? Like it's, he knows it's his specialist discipline and he's not as good on the lead as, so he needs to make up some points on this. And... Yeah, exactly that. It's almost there's a lot more mental games going on than a usual kind of boulder or lead conference. Yeah, and how they approach the two zones as well has been interesting because we're seeing some athletes go for attempts where they don't really have enough time, but they know they need to get that second scoring yeah. point, and that's changed things as well. Alberto Hines Lopez, he comes to boulder two. It's 
Sam Abazu gets sat down. <laughs> So remember, Medjdi flashed this. Now he doesn't use the side pull, he goes out to the... sort of a pinch on the edge of the yeah. volume. And Alberto's towards the final move. It doesn't look as good as using that zone hold. From Sam. But it's such a narrow position, there's no... like edge on those holds at all, it's all just vertical wall and you're just squeezing and trying to do a pull up on them. <laughs> and that's what we mean by compression, don't yeah. we? You're sort of so you're pushing squeezing, kind of squeezing, yeah. And how do you train something like that? Uh, a lot of gyms have got like kind of boxes hanging from walls around fingerboards or just climbing on this style of problem as well. So, yeah. There's very few holes in the boulder comp that point the right way anymore. <laughs> So Sam uses that zone hop this time, then gets into that chimney style position where he'll scrunch himself up. Pushing and pressing his way through. And this, it looks fairly restful, but there's so many muscles working for him right yeah, now. It's a really on. steep wall, this as well. It's, yeah. it's like maybe 40 degrees overhanging, so. Yeah, and he's not sitting there having a good yeah. time. He's, he's having to push with his legs the whole time, and like, his hands keeping him on. And, or better this. Isn't looking in the right position to get that slope. We're not using the toe from the left as he could do. Yeah, both the French boys match the middle pinch off the toe hook. Look at no, the right pinch. Oh, Sam, it was a blind jump and he went too high on it. That's really amazing. For Medjidi to sort of spot that and then make an adjustment in the air in order to see that slot. Fingertips keeping him on. Yeah, just not looking in the best position for that slope. And you can see why it's so intense on the skin there. That's like dragging your hand down a bit of <laughs> sandpaper. 120 grit sandpaper. <laughs> yeah, the athlete's doing a lot of skin maintenance. It was something we saw, especially uh, at the end of the single events because they came back to back like the athletes just taped up heavily on all the fingers yeah warm ups on the sort of third and fourth day people warming up in gloves like taped up fingertips like anything to conserve that extra little bit yeah schedules change depending on events but this one was particularly intense for them i mean everyone was in the same boat but it was tough Sam with his back against the chimney once more as he comes up. 44 seconds. This might be his last attempt at this by the time he comes down, depending on how far he gets. Alberto looking like he's getting further away. Yeah, he's trying to use the hold, but maybe he didn't even use that middle hold at all. He just jumped straight out. Ah, oh, Sam got it the second time with the jump. Here we get the 25 points. And Alberto leaves the stage unsuccessful on his boulder as the time counts down. You don't need to go all the way to the end, and sometimes you do see athletes stopping quite early if they know they haven't got a boulder and they're going to preserve skin. A bit old scratch on Sam Avazu's leg there. I was just having a look. I think it's an old one. So we pause as the volunteers brush the holds down on the map. This was Alberto. It seemed to go a bit backwards on this. Yeah, it's very easy to power out in a bottle like this. Like, it's squeezing really hard on those pinches. And... Yeah, just running it's out of energy and power a bit. Right, so we come down to Lucas, Luca Potica and Philip Schenk. Now, Philip is behind at this point. He needs to get a top on this last, sorry, this third boulder. Thank you. 
that statue-like position. Maximum points for Boulder is 100. There's the scores down on the bottom. Top 25, second zone six, first zone three, and every attempt for those is minus 0.1. Luca just missing that right and pinch there. Mm. Oh, he does that same uh, method. It's quite confusing. There's a lot of chalk in that hole. Mm. Over the finch blows is the top of it. They use it as an undercut, but it's in the bottom side of it. Yeah, it hasn't really been working as a whole, but yeah, you're right. The more people trying it, the more chalk yeah. there goes, then you start thinking, well, that's the way. So Philip presses, rotates. Luca gets the zone. He's trying it again, this Philip. But I mean, you could make that work, maybe. He jams the foot. Maybe that was the intended boost from the retail. Maybe that's what they wanted. Use that footlock. So, Philip is nearing the zone. Remember, it's pretty much everything you can see on that black volume. Bumping the hands, matching that hold. Oh, oh campus is through. <laughs> <laughs> so easy. He seemed to enjoy taking his feet off there way more than having them on. Out to the right, and we knew he had to get that to stay in touch, and he has. So it's 33, and look what that's done to his score. Uh, something right, wasn't it? Yeah, he was in danger of falling behind if he didn't get that. So good work from him. Yeah. Sometimes it is easier not to use your feet, but <laughs> sometimes. Absolutely. So Luca very much using his feet at this point, but we're about to see him lose it as he jumps, swings backwards, and yet, same as Alberto, it's like a power out maybe. Yeah, I think he just missed the thumb on the left hand pinch there. Uh, just didn't have to squeeze. And yeah, there's a lot going on, because you've got to jump, catch it, and squeeze all at the same time. Yeah, and pull in to kill the swing. <laughs> this is the thing, when we mentioned coordination, I mean, a move like that is coordination, but... I guess in the scheme of World Cup bouldering, it's relatively simple. It's, uh, <laughs> yeah, the movement, I suppose, is, is simple compared to some of them when you get toe hooks and heels and all of them being dynamic. Yeah. Crowd get behind him, he's got 30 seconds on the clock, goes again to the zone. One of his last tries at this. Now gets the toe. <laughs> Has he got the stamina, though, as we near the end of this boulder? Just missed a good point, part of that hold. Yeah, he looks tired for sure as he leaves. So, Luca, no score, no top score for him. Got himself set, fell from this move a few times. Positive that edge, is it? No. And there's nothing Terrible screwed edge. onto it either. Anyone <laughs> speak Slovenian? Fred, not. <laughs> so there they are again. I'm loving the fact these two are together. It's so good. So Jakob is out, as is Adam Ondra. And Jakob Schubert, the only person to top holder too. So if he can get this, he'll be right on top of things. See if Adam can match him on the, on the second boulder. Both of them as well. In their day, equally good on the lead walk. Jakob trying to refigure out this sequence. Where's he going to go to? He looked up to the pinch. So he falls and presses. And Adam launches up. That's what Jakob Schubert hit. This wide shot, desperate trying to figure out where he wants to go. 
Yeah, he sort of always wanted to get in a better position statically, and I think you just got to go yeah. when you're out in that place. It's a bit of a nightmare boulder in this situation where you... Because usually you can sit and... If you've read the boulder and you know what you're under, you can sit and visualise it. It's almost like you've climbed it like 20 times already. I mean, you've got no idea what to do. You're just like, oh my God, do I go left, do I go right? <laughs> do I use this bit? <laughs> All of them, when they've sat down on that starting hold, have yeah. sort of just, just had a little moment of like, yeah. oh, okay, <laughs> here we go. Yeah, he just, the, so the more he tried to work out, the more he was falling off. So he's got to commit to a method here. Now he rotates and turns. Let's see how much Jacob's trying just to stay on the wall. Yeah. Yeah. Adam's taking me down now. Yeah, so Adam's through, and Jakob does work it out and he's going for that foot jam so the heel and the toe pressing into the crack created by the two volumes matches the zone hold trying to go low Adam can't get that move either well, it's funny to move your weight across you have to bend your leg to go low but then when you're in the hold you have to stand up again so uh, really powerful, so much force going through your core. And, and the leg as well, and your <laughs> right bicep. Like. Yeah, everything being tested. Yak has been on this so long, it's like a lead yeah. route. Might as well clip at this point. And he's brought the chalk bag with him, so he can chalk up midway. But he's nearing this quite blind yeah, jump. His feet quite low as so. well. Jakob struggling at the moment, as is Adam. He was deep into it, but didn't have the toe up. Yeah, it'd make it very interesting. Oh, it's it that bad that hold is yeah, oh. terrible for that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, no little extra screw on in there or anything. No just... screw on it and no edge at all, just rolls upwards into it. And Jakob just couldn't find the foot position. He needed, as you said, yeah. to get the feet higher. Yeah, but he left his feet so low and just did more, more, more moves, and then just couldn't move. Well, they're both still going. The temperature's cooler here in the stadium than in the last couple of days. Cloudy this afternoon, which will help. Yeah, much nicer temperature today. And the they judge, were. sorry, just the judges just looking at um, Jakob's hands there, because you're not allowed blood on the hole, so no. if they think it might be bleeding, they have to check. Yeah, yesterday they were hosing down the crowd. Yeah, we said hose it's us like down, we're boiling fun. up here. Yeah, it's a different condition yeah, for the man. Finding that footwork. So he's jamming, coming his toe between and heel in that little gap. It takes a lot of weight off, off your hands. Adam is not going to get this done, and I think his displeasure is clear on that one. Jakob is going to have to motor, he's only got 10 seconds, it's not really enough time. He's got the zone. Oh, and look, he's... Oh, he thinks, figured it out. Yeah. <laughs> well, both Adam and Jakob letting us know exactly their feelings. Oh. That's opened the final right up, hasn't it? He's still, he's still frustrated. He knew if he could have get that, he would have been up at the top of the leaderboard in a really good place. But now Sam Avazu is on the top spot. So this is what he was holding on to. Pressing position in the chimney, and he needed to get his feet a little higher, which he did eventually, but yeah. then ran out of time. And this is showing the judge. So <laughs> obviously he's making the case that there's no blood at all. What are you talking about? A big handful of chalk in there, I think, as well. Yes. <laughs> so now I'm not bleeding. No, yeah, nothing. <laughs> Honest, Your Honour. Right, it is a safety concern, and it's right. We don't want people bleeding all over the wall. So, and you see sometimes the athletes having to tape up. And Molly was telling me that she practices uh, speed taping. Taping. <laughs> Which I thought was brilliant. I've never heard anyone tell me that. <laughs> it could be a whole discipline in itself. <laughs> yeah, it should be. It's like a pit stop at Formula One, you know. Right, so we get to see boulder number four for the first time which is potentially the hardest one of the whole set. I wouldn't be able to reach that either. No, I'll try not to. <laughs> Let's see if Majdi can uh, prove them wrong, shall we? 
So he's going to go for a big jump so across I the think, slab. I think Medi will probably like this a lot. <laughs> oh, his foot nearly went higher than his head then. Nikolai is underneath, same position as Jakob was. Look at that leaderboard. Sam Abazi, 55.7. Medzi shot from 5.7 as well. And Jakob as well. And Jakob. So the top three just separated. Close at the top. If it stays this way, almost neck and neck like this, it will all come down to who climbs highest on that lead wall. Jakob would be quite happy with that if it stays as it is. Yeah, the scores from the lead are added to the boulder at the end. Medjdi is into the first zone and the second zone. It's a long way. You need to jump into a palm and stick your hand in there. Oh, and he does. Look at that from Medjdi. <laughs> That is pure new school strength from Medjdi Schalk. <laughs> awesome to see from him. I mean, it's, it's, it's a move that you will not see very often at your yeah. local wall. Something like that. It's very specific to this style of cob climbing and this style of setting. Look at that. I mean, what do you even call that? <laughs> Dynamic coordination mantle, I think. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> The only way to describe it, isn't it? Yeah, is that a backwards palm press? I don't know. I feel like a lot of my job is just making up climbing terms here. <laughs> yeah, I think you'd see that move on a slab and done more statically, but not on an overhanging wall. Right. This is Nikolai working. And he's still oh. climbing. Just look at that face. A fight going on there. Oh. Just trying to find that point to move on. Couldn't do it though. So he's going to jam the foot in as well in the set. Comes, oh, he hasn't changed it slightly. Oh, Bicycle around the far volume. Works his way up and he has got time. But we watch Jakob run out of time. He hasn't actually got the second zone yet. He should do now with that movement. Yeah, there it goes, on the scoreboard. Yeah. And now as long as he can... Oh, but he's twisted so awkwardly around towards the audience. I don't know. And he's gone, so he's got 20 seconds left, but it's not enough time. And he got the second zone by that point. No point in wasting skin and energy. This was the final turn. He just got himself in the wrong place, and that spin, spinning him off the wall. Yeah, he's got quite a lot of strapping on that right arm, which is the one that's bothering him a lot in the boulder final. So I wonder if that's still bothering him a little bit, whether it's just a precautionary thing. Yeah, Nikolai. If you watch back that competition, he seemed genuinely surprised to top out the slab when he won. And uh, I think he's just enjoying being here. It's, you know, being in the top eight on the combined final yeah. this big, it sets you up so well for next year for the qualifying events. Oh, absolutely. That's all learning, isn't it? Like, isn't it? It's totally different to a normal World Cup. It's, uh... Right, so Sam Abazu has a chance to go up to the top of the leaderboard here if he can get this done. How much of this can they plan in their heads, that foot movement? It's something I really struggle with when you look at a bowl like this, is where do you place your feet? Um, again, when you do a lot of them, I think you have an instinct for where you need to be. The initial position they're generating out of looks really weird, like really off balance and it's like there's almost like a strength element to it where you're, you're stick that easily, doesn't you? Yeah, now this is the move we haven't worked out what to call it yet. 
Oh, goes, oh look at that. Pressing up underneath. And that is going to send him right to the top. Right here. They really are. I mean, they're making a play for this. And Alberto tops yeah. out at the same time. And this is setting us up for an amazing lead final. <laughs> it really it is. is. So interesting. <laughs> Alberto with those Olympic rings. Spain's youngest gold medalist. The youngest gold medalist ever. Wow. Up to the top, turns back, job done from him. Sam Abizu in this move looks so good. The rotation, he was going up as he was holding the swing. That's our leaderboard, 80.6 at the top. So Philip Schenk managed to keep himself in contention after a slower start from him. Luca Pottiger turns and has a look at this complicated boulder for three. The crowd have been swelling, growing all afternoon. There's more and more have come into the stadium, and there's a huge amount of people now watching. Yeah, the crowd numbers have been amazing here, like, like midweek and Everyone still come out and yeah, it's really awesome. Thank you to everyone here in Munich for putting on such a good show. So not, not quite as rowdy as yesterday. We have Hannah Mule, local German in the finals, but <laughs> that's to be expected. Yeah, we just we needed a German in here, but I think they've kind of adopted uh, Nikolai Uznik and um, Jakob Schubert. So, Luca Potterjo is having a long look at the start of this boulder. This was his initial press. Obviously, mostly a lead specialist, but do, will do a fair amount of boulder training as well, so... Yeah, and the disciplines are starting to merge. We're starting to see boulders get a little bit longer and lead walls get more, 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 more complex. Yeah. yeah. Philip Sheng back and forth he goes, springs out to the right and can't make that move work. Look at that. Almost jamming the toes. And oh, now we get it in. And that would feel good. It's a nice feeling when it slips in like that. Chalk. Yeah, almost everyone's taking a chalk bag up there. Schenk is missing that left hand at the moment. Luca pressing, hasn't brought the left foot, now does. And he'll be able to sit here and breathe for a moment. So he's trying to figure out which way up he is, which way he's facing, yeah. where the next hold is. It's so easy to get lost on things like this. And he hasn't got the second zone. Not yet. Philip Schenk not getting the jump locked in. He's trying to hold the sloper underneath, but it's more of a blocker than a hold. Yeah, well, that's just to stop him using the back edge of the volume. Pressing up, and now he'll get the zone, and looks in a better position than Nikolai did. Actually, he's... He's got a twist. Even more... Oh, that strength. <laughs> to hold that, incredible. Yeah, he's pointing the wrong way as well. It's, uh, <laughs> and he's choking up one hand, it just a flex. Yeah. <laughs> and he's taking his time, he's got the time, he needs to make sure of this. It would have taken a lot out of him. He had to engage a different gear to make that work. And he does top out. Oh. He had to oh, dig really deep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, the nerves, I feel you. Not sure what that was, blood. Maybe or... blood. 
a lot of positioning. Usually, if it's the RKC official, it's blood. Yeah. So he winds up. Misses the foot there. Couldn't get the foot leading first. So frustration from Philip Schenk. He has a lot more work to do. Come the lead. He'll go now and rest before that starts. And the lead will kick off around about 5 p.m. here at Munich time. About half an hour break between the boulder ending and the lead beginning. This is this move. I mean, look, it, well, he made it look as hard as it was. Hold. Yeah, hold is facing it. Like. Well, look at that left the right. Wait, hang on, I'm lost. Which hand is it? <laughs> the uh, right left hand. hand. Left hand. Yeah, left hand. And spun around a head jam in there. Oh, that forehead getting involved. And then look at the hands. He's matching his own fingers. Oh, every, the more I see of this, the more disgustingly <laughs> strong that move was. Gripping your own hand. Oh. If you're new to climbing, that is not usual, by the way. That's not something you'll see often. Don't, don't try this at home. No, please don't. <laughs> Out to the right, and that face said it all. I mean, he yeah. used his forehead, he crimped his own fingers, he deserved it, frankly. Yeah. If you want a lesson in trying hard, that was it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Here we go, the two legends. Adam Andre, Jakob Schubert come out. Jakob was so disappointed not to figure out boulder number three. And want a bit of revenge on number four. Yeah, I think he thought he'd figured out three as well and just went out of time. Yeah. So Adam turns. I can't wait to see Adam on this because he's not really going to fit into that chimney very well with the, uh, no. the left leg bringing back. But he might be able to reach through a few of the moves and be less dynamic, so maybe different sections will suit him. Yeah, I mean, he'll be able to leave his feet a little bit lower like Jakob did and then get stuck, but Adam might be able to reach out of it. So. Well, he's easily through the beginning bit, and this is where I thought he might struggle, but it doesn't look like he is. In fact, he's, he's just getting higher. He usually struggle with. Uh, getting into small spaces as long as they're not too tight I and mean, it's okay yeah he's got great flexibility he's cruising this at the moment this is the power move <laughs> so different oh, easy very easy and Adam uh, Jakob is yeah. in still the time. Adam easily out oh. with a flash maximum score for him what was the problem he turns and he'll be sent out the other way and Jakob, and heel to his hand, still needs to match though, and there's a lot of work to do, and he does pop down. Wants a brush, again, the head shake. Yeah, it's so hard to get your hand out of the way in that position. Yeah, he's trying to hold the top. I mean, he's got a thumb on the screw, but... Ah, oh, he knows that could have been important. He's got plenty of time now. That's only his first attempt, which is really impressive to get that high. I wonder how much psychologically watching... Well, he knew Adam flashed that boulder. It's right in yeah. his peripherals. He can hear it. He knew he was frustrated. It might be starting to play mind games for him. Adam made that look so easy. Yeah, so I thought it was a hard boulder there. If they changed it, well, we weren't watching. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's got that move absolutely dialed, doesn't he? Yeah, he's got it down. But this is where he's struggling with the press. Making the adjustment to make this work. He's still oh. trying to heal. Slipped. Gets it in this time. Oh, oh he's got his toe on now. Oh, yeah. he does get it done. Jakob Schubert will enjoy that moment as the crowd go crazy. Yeah, starting to get pretty rowdy in here now. Uh, it is. Everyone's getting into this. Hope you are at home as well. We're coming to the end of the boulder part of this boulder and lead competition. Jakob Schubert getting horizontal. And this is pretty much, certainly for the top three, neck and neck coming into the lead round. Yeah, super fascinating round. Like, all doing kind of different things, like, at different rates. And it's... it's funny how it changes for a viewer, because for me, I quite like how tight it is. Usually we'd be saying maybe there's not enough separation, yeah. but it's really enjoyable that they're at this yeah, level. I think because they are falling off different boulders, that makes it interesting. Yeah, you're right. 
and it's just gonna have all to play for on that lead ball i mean there's decibel points separating these guys yeah. All right, Nicola Uznik's out, and we will slow things down a bit. Only one athlete at a time now as we come to the final climb. So we get to watch the last four in detail. Nicola has a long look. Yeah, he's just trying to remind himself of this boulder. So it's been a little while since observation. So. Nikola is one of the ones who needs a top here. Setting down in sixth place. Oh, no, so close. He almost tried to move away from it before it was really on. It's almost like he thought he'd stuck it and then, yeah, it's oh. like the hand went. Yeah. <laughs> I <remember> that. <laughs> And Nikolai will be back on his second attempt at this. Swing that left leg, much better. Oh, so strong. <laughs> Hero move from him. I can tell you that hold isn't that good. No. He tries it very dynamically. Again, just a little bit rushed on it, maybe. Yeah. Well, that is that hole he's holding you. Right, it's terrible. I mean, it's it's big, but it's, it's, it's how slow it is. Really slopey, and Dave, how come if they're covering their hands in chalk, why aren't they putting loads of chalk on their feet if it's the same principle? Um, best to describe this. I guess it would be a bit like climbing roller skates. So okay. You have this little layer of chalk between the rubber's sticky. So if you put a layer of chalk on there as well, then it's just going to get slippy and slide around. Well, the chalk's there to absorb that moisture. Yeah. It's going to be pretty hot. And... So hands, yeah. not feet, in your feet. Oh, look at this. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> he was showboating that. <laughs> yeah. Having fun. It's yeah. all see, isn't it? Why not? Giving the photographer something to take a picture of Nikola Uzdik spins in the air and gives a cheeky look to the audience. Bumps him into fourth place for now. <laughs> yeah, so just 20 points behind the top three. And 20 points. Well, we'll explain how the lead system works later on, but 20 points is not a lot as long as you get high. Let's see this slopey hold. So he's got the fingers in as well. They need to change it into a palm. And then look at this move. Like mid-air, he's having to change it into, his, into a palm. Right. Yeah, so jumping and twisted. And that great little look to the audience. I really enjoyed that. Well, that's cool to see. So that helped his score. He did what he needed to keep within distance. Alberto's out. That's what Alberto makes of this. Coordination move. <laughs> yeah, he tends to be pretty good at them. He's trained a lot with Adam Ondra as Alberto. For a long time, people were saying that he was someone to watch. I think he spent quite a lot of time in Innsbruck as well, I think, wasn't he? Training with the Austrians. And... Yeah. And during that Olympic year, he did every competition you could possibly yeah, do on the circuit. Crazy. I, I thought he was completely wrong. I thought he yeah. was bonkers. It's and almost it like worked. he hadn't trained before the start of the season and just got better and better and better. <laughs> I spoke to him about it, and he just said, look, I just I felt like I needed to climb my way into it. So competition yeah. just became second nature. Oh, spun with the right foot. I'm not using the catch underneath. Now he does, and now he needs to flick up, change it. Oh, he wasn't that high on it, and this is really physical now. Yeah, it's a slightly overhanging wall list, so you're falling out. So I don't think you can mantle this out statically. So I'm going to try a different way. So too big a jump, try two yeah. different things. So I guess that's the method that the boot sets were worried about. Right. Where you could rock out that way with your foot still on the, on the zone hold. And just press upwards. Press up. Yeah, and it's a good point about the wall being overhanging, because it was more vertical or even sort of 
um, slabbier, then you could you could press Mantle. down and get balanced on one hand. But yeah, too tricky to do that on a wall that shape. Love those sunglasses. <laughs> So Alberto again, likely to have got this move down, and he has. Yeah, it looks so easy when they do it. <laughs> so hard when they don't. <laughs> yeah, it's just learning the movement. <sighs> Tries the same way again, but a bit more dynamically. Looking a tiny bit gassed out. He'll have to rest. Just seems to be pushing himself out from the wall a bit too much. Alberto is resting now. He's just reassessing. Oh, yeah. See if he does anything different this time. Yes, yeah, so he's had a long time to think about this. Up he goes, easy now. It's all about this move. Presses and goes and misses. So all the other guys were facing to the right, and he's trying to face to the left. But... So I wonder if it only works one way. Yeah, it's a good point. It might do. And sometimes that's all it takes, a little tiny angle change, and something becomes impossible. He's got 61.7. It's not the worst place to be. Yeah, the lead is probably from his discipline as well. Yeah. But if he can get this, I mean... Oh, he's going statically again. Surely not. No, not quite. And he's got time for another go. I wonder if he'll realise that if he goes that way and goes dynamic, then it unlocks it. When you uh, sit down after a cop with the athletes, do they just kick themselves sometimes they don't see a move, or is there always a process that they went through to get there? I guess initially there's a bit of kicking. It's like, oh, I've just done this, and it's like... Oh. And then when they kind of... Calm down a bit from that, you can go into kind of, okay, why wasn't the... Then you can why didn't you it. do that? Oh, why did you miss this foothold? Or... Yeah. But it's hard, isn't it? Because the boulders are different every single time. So it's not yeah. like you can take an, ex an identical learning situation. Yeah. So I guess that's the key for these things. Who can adapt to the boulder in front of them? It's like, okay, it's a bit like this move that I did two months ago at whatever gym. And... Yeah. Yeah, because even 100 metres, you mess up the start. It's the same 100 yeah. metres the next time you do it. With this, it's, it's so different. Alberto can't work it out. But 60. I think it's sort of similar to tennis. Like, you, the ball's always doing something different, and you've got to adapt to what's in front of you every time. But slightly slower pace. Yeah, very true. There's Slovenia. It's Lucas. Luca Potterjet comes out onto the stage. Let's see. We can figure this out. We've only got two athletes left, so Luca and then Adam out on this before we pause. And Luca again needs this. Started slow compared to the rest. Yeah, I think this is absolutely critical for Luca to get. Oh, it's a great start. I mean, he is new school <laughs> for this move. Oh, matches, then goes. He seems to be in around for ages, Luca, but he's still so young. Like. Yeah. Had a great comp last year in his home country, where he was got the silver. Oh, look, everything popping off it, and that's what we mean by bad hold. There's no positive edge to hold on to. Bit of friction, and you're jumping through the air whilst you're trying to hold on. <laughs> really good on that. It's not just coming out from the wall a little bit. It's, uh, so not only is he having to hold the swing sideways, he's having to hold the swing out as well. So it needs to change things a little bit. We'll just hold on more, but yeah. <laughs> just hold on tighter. Just don't let go. <laughs> it's it's the climbing is one of those sports. You watch it on TV and it's you just think just hold
hold on. Yeah. Like, what are you doing? That holds massive. What are you doing? Yeah. yeah. But it's so much harder than it looks. And I was up there on the stage having a look at these holes, and you just, the size of it as well, the scale, it's a big wall, everything is far apart. It's complicated. This is the world's best. And people talk about grades all the time. How do you grade something like this? And especially with boulder, it's difficult to do because how do you grade a coordination jump, you know? Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's like what grade is when you cross three volumes are going to do it. Like, <laughs> if I put V2 on it, you'll complain. <laughs> yeah, I mean, an example, the route setters were trying this move with trainers on and making it work. Yeah. Because once you know the angles and how it, how it goes together, it and is also easy. with these, these black volumes, so what we're seeing on the camera now, like the surface area is on a shoe is actually in trainers is actually bigger than a climbing shoe. It's just the rubber isn't quite as sticky. So Luca is trying to find something here. He's got coming up to the minute mark left. He knows. But despite how strong a lead climber is, if he doesn't get this, he's got a mountain to climb. So stable in that position. Yeah, you feel like it's not close yet. It's not like he's about to unlock it. Yeah, you see how far away from the wall he is there. So pressure now, 30 seconds to go. But look at the so time. Many little things that can affect that move, like the angle of either of your feet can change that move completely. <laughs> you turn your ankle up three degrees and you do the move. It's like <laughs> so it's great watching the, the quality of the slow motion we have because you can see all of these little yeah. details. Seemed to get a little further over the back of it as well. Crimped his fingers up a bit more than he had been doing. <sighs> as close yeah. as you get. Go us. Never, never show up for a bit of passion. No. <laughs> so our final climber for the boulder round, Adam Andra walks onto the stage. He is up there if he manages to get this. Yeah, just trying to do a bit quick mass in the head then and <laughs> use your fingers. <laughs> Shooting socks are off, so. Right, what could Adam do? He flashed the last boulder brilliantly, it's got to be said. But this is... Is this too new school for Adam Andre? He doesn't love these kind I of moves. I think he's practiced quite a lot of this style, so... Yeah, comps are important to him. He's, uh, as much as he loves outdoor climbing, he wants to win these things. First zone, yeah. matches. Oh, oh, hello. Yeah. No. Oh. This is classic Adam. Oh, yeah. Now, you won't see that from many other people as he rocks high up on the foot and another flash from under. That sent him to the top of the leaderboard, 80.7. So now we've got four climbers in the 80s, which means all yeah. of them, it's just a case of who climbs higher on the leaderboard. Yeah. I mean, that's. I hope that the lead route splits them out. Yeah. Right.